stuff I learned about Marxism in high school. What is this? Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> this is what we do here, guys. We, we all collect online, and we like to just fucking we spend our days arguing with each other, okay? Some people like polo. Some people play chess. Some people do pottery. And we like to, you know, annihilate our mental health by engaging in totally fruitless debate for hours on end that does nothing but make us furious with each other and alienate ourselves. That's what we do on Twitch. I don't know how you like to live your life, Kink. That's what we do around here. The Socratic method? Well, I, w I don't know if I would go so far as to say that we're doing like the Socratic method. day for years and in the end you're kind of dumber as a result so it's like a bizarro version of the uh, Socratic method yeah did you guys know that Socrates was a socialist <laughs> my hypothetical being that if we remove the human element and fully automate the agriculture and energy sectors and remove the need for subsidies and the public can choose to directly or indirectly invest. Well, nobody knows how like full automation and AI is gonna impact things. Like nobody knows. It could usher in a post-scarcity world. It could, it's possible. It's possible. What, 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 would you call that communism? You know, like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. What are your thoughts on Southern Christian fundamentalists that seem to be taking over the right? That this has been they've been a staple of right wing politics for decades now. Decades. So it's not it's nothing new. It's just they played the long game, they focused on the courts, they took courts seriously, and young lefty voters don't take courts seriously, and they just think like, oh well, you know. We'll just let Republicans pack the fucking courts for decades, and uh, I'm sure that'll work out well. Yeah, let's get, you, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get Medicare for all done in about 10 years, 15 years, while the Republicans control 90% of the donor shit. Yeah, they're just going to let us do Medicare for all. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <sighs> Thoughts on going bald? Um... I don't have any personal experience, so I can't speak to that. He said very specifically, depending on the questions you ask, Putin, mm -hmm. um, you know, you could be arrested or not. And I said, listen to what you're saying. You're saying the U.S. government has, like, control over my questions and will arrest me if I ask the wrong question? Like, how are we better than Putin if that's true? Killing Navalny during the Munich Security Conference in the middle of the debate over $60 billion in Ukraine funding? Maybe the Russians are dumb. I didn't get that vibe at all. I don't think we kill people in other countries to affect. Lex Friedman, you guys, is at best extremely naive. An extremely naive man. Election outcomes. At best. At best. Um, you know, and like just generally stupid. All right. I tend to think that's where he's at. I don't think he's a grifter. I think he's just kind of dumb and naive. I think that's his whole thing. Like, when Tucker Carlson announced that he was doing, he wants to believe, exactly. He wants to believe in this, like, we just need to talk more, guys, you know? We just need to talk more. You know what we need to do, guys? Instead of arguing all the time, having these fierce disagreements, okay? What if, guys, listen to me, hear me out, come in close to this one, okay? Come in close to this one. Come in real close. Come in real close to this one, okay? What if instead of war in Ukraine, they just, they just talked it out? Well, I'll get Zelensky. This side of the table. Why don't we just give peace a chance, you know? No 
nobody, it's, it's crazy. No one's thought about doing this before me. You know, nobody wants to have these hard conversations, but war is a choice and uh, you don't have to do it, guys. You can just talk it out. Let's just talk it out. Let's just talk it out. When Tucker Carlson announced that he was doing an interview with Vladimir Putin, Tucker Carlson was in the comments, in the replies on Twitter. He's like, this is a good thing. We need more conversations, not less. It's like, at what point do you acknowledge that there are, let's say, bad actors on the international stage? At what point do you acknowledge that some leaders of some countries maybe don't have the best intentions? Maybe they're not super interested in global cooperation and peace treaties and sovereign borders and trivial things like that. You know, At what point do you acknowledge that some foreign leaders maybe don't have America's best interests in mind or their neighbors, you know? At what point do you acknowledge, like, some people cannot be reasoned with? You're not going to change Vladimir Putin's mind by sitting down and having a conversation with him. You're not going to change Kim Jong-un's mind about sitting down and having a fucking conversation with him. That's bullshit. You think you think you think um, Lex Friedman could change Vladimir Putin's mind? Is that what you think? Hey, 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 whoa, 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 Malik, chill, 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 Jesus. Some of you, some of you motherfuckers are getting aggressive. Data Waves has just been full on schizo posting in here for like three hours. This man is furious. Okay, all right, listen, you're welcome here. Keep coming back. I haven't listened to a goddamn thing, just joined. Do yourself a favor and go back and, and watch the entire VOD, okay? We worked out, we worked out the whole socialism program, uh, pr uh, problem. We all agreed, there was no fighting. Perfect unanimity could emulate what we accomplished here in chat. There would be no war. There would be no war in Ukraine. You just, you could just fucking, it's just like the whole Lex Friedman thing. He's like, he's so fucking, he's such an Elon stand too. And I just can't respect anybody who stands Elon Musk. If you're stan Elon Musk, or if you buy his bullshit about being this like, personal liberty guy, this fucking free speech champion. I just don't have a lot of like, at that point, I'm like, okay, we're dealing with someone that's like 80, 85 IQ, you know? There's just, there's limits. There's limits to how far you can engage with this person, you know? Oh, wait. No, we do it a lot. I'm happy. Don't you have or blue or whatever? So, I don't pay for my blue check. I just woke up one morning and there was a fucking Opta Gaming logo next to my name and a blue check. But even if I did, I don't think, I think you can make an argument that if you do content creation, that it makes sense to pay for blue. Like, I don't think that that's necessarily, like, um, contradictory. Like, if I see a content creator, and, like, if you do this for, like, I can understand somebody who does social media for a living paying for blue. That makes sense. Because there's, like, there's reasons for that. It's in service of your, if you're, like, no disrespect to any of the blue people in here, but if you're, like... And and again, I'm not I'm not like I'm not talking about like I don't think people should be evaluated on their follower count like or the amount of likes that they get on things. I'm not about that at all. Like I don't. That's not something that factors into my. I'm not gonna dismiss someone because they have like less viewers or whatever. Um, but if you're like 45 follower Andy, and you know maybe the people that follow you are like a few coworkers and some family and some friends, and you're paying for blue, like. Why? <laughs> Are you really using like the expanded bookmarks feature? Are you really hate like are, are are you really um making that much money off of your posts? You know how much money I made last month from from posting, guys? You look down on, on everyone not liberal? I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I certainly look down on you because you say some dumb shit. In here. 
you just say like I judge people on the on like what they say. So it makes sense if you have 150 followers. Like look, like if you have 50 followers or 100 followers or 200 followers and you pay for blue and you're trying to make social media stuff work for a career, then I can understand that. I can. I'm not going to tell you like oh that's weird, you know? Like but if you're actually like, "Oh, my goal is I want to do content stuff and fucking social media stuff. I want to do that for a living." And you're in the pursuit of that goal, pay for blue, you know, go nuts. That's fine. If you have no intention, if you're like fucking uh, like an insurance guy or uh you're into crypto or whatever, you know, like <laughs> I don't know. Like if you have no if you have if you have no aspirations of becoming like a content person, why what is the point of paying for blue? What is the point of that? Um okay. I got paid out seventeen dollars and sixty one cents for the first half of February, which was up from eleven dollars and twenty eight cents for the second half of January, which was down from twenty one dollars and sixty one sixty seven cents for the first part of January. I did okay. In December, guys, in December, I made about $80. $80. Dang, you paid for your subscription? I didn't, though. I got a free roll. Hector, you, th so what happens is, like, if you pay for, it's like, <laughs> this is another thing. You can pay, like, if you're an organization you, or a company, you can pay $2,000 to get, like, the gold verified thing. And then when you have that, you can assign affiliate status to people that are in that organization. And so Hector, without, I didn't even ask him for it. I just woke up. Hector gave me this like optic affiliate status thing. Like I, I don't pay for it. I wonder how long uh, that's gonna go on for. Like <laughs> I fully expect, and maybe it doesn't happen. Honestly, maybe it, it probably won't happen because Hector doesn't, he doesn't really work like that, but if I got a call from Hector one day, it's like, look, I love you, buddy, but politics stuff, I would be like, I get it. It's fine. I understand. You don't get the Mr. Beast CPM payouts? I do. That's a separate thing. And I don't want to get into that. We'll say it's much more lucrative than uh, Twitter blue stuff. But that's a small program. That's a small program. The, the like Twitter creator program where you can monetize videos is much, much smaller than like YouTube. They do a very kind of, they do a different approach to that where they keep their pool of creators small and they, which reduces the risk. So like on YouTube, for example, they've, we've had like two or three adpocalypses. PewDiePie on the bridge saying the N-word and all of a sudden CPMs drop for everybody. Um, the like Twitter seeks to avoid that by keeping their pool of creators small, so it's like a smaller, more trusted pool of creators that that they know are not gonna say the N word on the bridge. You can't see the truth, and it's huh. hilarious. Um, what truth do you want me to see? I'll see your truth. Tell me your truth. I want to know your truth. So talk to me. I will affirm whatever truth you want me to affirm. Do you have a truth account? No, I don't. Dude, hop in the Discord. Let's have a conversation. I do want to talk to you, man. I feel like we... Didn't we get close to talking one time? I would love to get to know you, Shokin. Just get in your head and see what you're all about. No? All right. It could be fun, though. You can use a voice changer, you know? Whatever you want to do. Usually when people say stuff like, oh, you just don't know the fuck, and you're just denying the truth, usually in, like, the modern times, they're talking about, like, COVID stuff. Fucking vaccine causes epilepsy and death. And, like, that's usually what they mean. Bruce! Brucey Goosey, what's up, buddy? Thank you for the raid. Welcome, guys. We're talking politics. We're about to watch Tucker Carlson on Lex Friedman. 
tomorrow at 2 p.m., myself, Bruce, Gassy Mexican, and the man they call C Nanners are going to be playing uh, Helldivers. I have not played that game yet. Should I go in totally blind or should I like play a few games to get the hang of it? It looks fun. Small disclaimer, we've been on the verge of watching this Tucker Carlson Lex Friedman podcast for about three hours. Go in blind? All right. We'll download it tonight. You literally have lost every fucking debate you've been in. Why would I waste my time with you and your delusions? Can you tell me what, what delusion you're talking about? Can you expand on what I'm delusional about? Oh, dude, I want to talk to you so bad. Get in the Discord. It's... Don't you want to chat with me? Come on. It could be very frustrating going in blind. You're looking at a seasoned gamer veteran right here. How hard could it be? Anyways, let's have. Look, let's get. Can we focus the fuck up, guys? Distracting me? For 80 years. The following is. No one is going to chat with you on Discord because they are afraid to. Ah, that's not true. I've had some people come in and talk. Conversation with Tucker Carlson, a highly influential and often controversial political commentator. When he was a Fox Time magazine. Uh, rude. A small egg-laying mammal has four heads on its penis. Argonaut octopus penis simply detaches itself looking to get laid. The Twitch Shit. streamer Hutch's penis is circumcised against his will. Female hyenas has an eight-inch clitoris. A what? Female hyenas. Eight-inch clitoris. Female hyena has eight inch clitoris. And it makes it tricky for mating. <laughs> oh my god. Do they just have the most powerful orgasms ever? Do animals ha do, do do female animals have orgasms? I mean the female orgasm is is a myth in general, so I doubt what? it. Do female um do female animals have orgasms? The question of female orgasm is, as usual, more hotly contested. Though all female mammals have clitorises, uh, scientists can infer that animals, mostly primate, primates, orgasm through recording physiological or behavioral aspects like muscle contraction or changes in vocalizations. It's, it looks like the jury is still out on if, if female animals actually have orgasms. We all assume that female animals have orgasms and get pleasure from sex due to the way that f oh, come on. There's like, dude, this is like a hotly debated subject in science. The claim that other animals feel no sexual, no pleasure from sex is a common misconception based on nothing whatsoever. Some guy made it up, others repeated him. And so it goes ever since. This is what we actually know. The majority of animals will actively seek and engage in mating behavior. They will engage in it even when it's inconvenient or dangerous. The behavior is positively reinforced by their nervous system, which all indicates that they, quote, like it. Pretty much everything measurable and observable that we associate with sex being fun can also be found in animals. But the question is, do they have orgasms? Do female, like, bonobos have orgasms? Why did the female orgasm evolve? Experiment supports theory. Um, in humans, the female orgasm isn't required for reproduction, so scientists have long been puzzled as to why it exists. Now, a new experiment on rabbits involving orgasm suppressing antidepressants confirm an intriguing theory that the reflex originally evolved to trigger ovulation. Humans, other primates, and rodents ovulate or produce mature eggs spontaneously humans on a monthly basis you know what i didn't learn until i was like 
until I was like 30 that that's what eggs were. Like I thought like maybe the male chickens... Like humans, giraffes undergo cycles of fertility. Unlike most humans, giraffes will sip each other's urine, a surefire way to tell if a female is in heat. This time-saving technique ensures that a male won't waste energy snooping around a lady who won't give him the time of day or is unlikely to conceive if they couple up. I mean, that doesn't seem weird to me. Um, I thought that, that like, roosters, like, fucked the egg. Maybe they had, like, tiny rooster penises, and it would, like, pierce the egg. I did. I did. Yeah. No, I'm not making that up. I'm serious. I didn't realize that, like, chickens ovulating was, like, that's the egg. I thought that the, the female chickens would like lay the egg and then the rooster would come and like just give it a little poke. I can't be the only one that thought that, okay? You can call me all the names you want. You might be. There's no way I was the only person that thought that. I'll bet you if I look it up right now. Do roosters fuck eggs? Reddit? Boom. Plenty of people on Reddit are on the same page as me, okay? I'm not I'm not I'm not breaking new ground here, guys. Back to the orgasm thing. Humans, other primates in rodents ovulate or produce mature eggs spontaneously, but in mammals such as rabbits and camels, ovulation typically needs to be triggered by mating. Some years ago, Michaela Pavlisev then a researcher at the Boston Children's Hospital was cataloging information about the ovarian cycle in different mammals when she stumbled on a pattern. In animals where ovulation is induced by mating, the hormones involved are the same ones released during the female orgasm. Uh, further research showed that animals where ovulation is induced by mating had a different anatomy the clitoris was inside the copulatory canal as opposed to outside in the case of humans and the genetic relationships between the animals were consistent with the idea that both kinds of mammals shared a common evolutionary ancestor whose ovulation was triggered by mating where's the get to the orgasm thing she reasoned that if an orgasm is really similar to induced induced ovulation in rabbits then a drug that suppresses orgasm in humans should suppress ovulation in rabbits. Suppressing orgasms in both men and women is a common side effect of antidepressants known as SSRIs. That's a really not fun side effect, by the way. That's not a fun one. Uh, Havlicev and her team chose to use a drug from that group called fluoxetine, which is uh, Prozac. The researchers treated female rabbits with the drug for two weeks, then mated them with a male rabbit. They found that the rabbits given fluoxetine had 30% fewer ovulations. That is, they released fewer eggs than rabbits that were not given the drug. We were actually really, really happy with that we actually got such a clear result. The orgasm-like reflex triggered by mating acts via the nervous system to release an ovulation-inducing hormone from the rabbit's brain. To double check that the Prozac wasn't suppressing ovulation directly, researchers ran a second experiment where they gave that hormone to the rabbits treated with fluoxetine, which restored the normal rate of ovulations. They don't know, guys. The scientists don't know if, if little rabbits have little rabbit orgasms. Pepsi Mom with a gifted sub, DG Hippie with um, 40 months. And the gifted sub to Malik. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Anyways, back to the uh, Tucker Carlson thing. He's called him the most powerful conservative in America. After Fox, he has continued to host big, impactful interviews and shows on X, on the Tucker Carlson podcast, and on TuckerCarlson.com. I recommend subscribing, even if you disagree with his views. It is always good to... <laughs> Hey. Hey. 
to explore a diversity of perspectives. Most recently, he interviewed the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We discussed this, the topic of Russia, Putin, Navalny, and the war in Ukraine at length in this conversation. Please allow me to say a few words about the very fact that I did this interview. I have received a lot of criticism publicly and privately when I announced that I will be talking with Tucker. For people who think I shouldn't do the conversation with Tucker or generally think that there are certain people I should never talk to, I'm sorry, but I disagree. I will talk to everyone as long as they're willing to talk genuinely in long form for two, three, four more hours. I will talk to Putin and to Zelensky, to Trump and to Biden, to Tucker and to Jon Stewart, AOC, Obama, and many more people with very different views on the world. I want to understand people and ideas. That's what long form conversation. What is that? I, I, the... I think he's fallen well short of that goal. <laughs> I don't think he's been entirely successful at cultivating a deeper understanding of the world. I don't know. We, maybe we need to give him more time. Putin would definitely talk to him, I believe. I, I think you're right about that. Conversations are supposed to be all about. Now, for people who criticize me for not asking tough questions, I hear you. But again, I disagree. I do often ask tough questions. But I try to do it in a way that doesn't shut down the other person, putting them into a defensive state where they give only shallow talking points. Instead, I'm looking always for the expression of genuinely held ideas and the deep roots of those ideas. When done well, this gives us a chance to really hear out the guest and to begin to understand what and how they think. And I trust the intelligence of you, the listener, to make up your own mind, to see through the bullshit, to the degree there's bullshit, and to see to the heart of the person. Sometimes I fail at this, but I'll continue working my ass off to improve. All that said, I find that this no tough questions criticism often happens when the guest is a person the listener simply hates and wants to see them grilled into embarrassment, called a liar, a greedy egomaniac, a kill- uh, Spend 10 minutes mocking this guy? I mean, I just think he's, I think he's just, um, again, I, my read of Lex Friedman is he is exceptionally, uh, naive. That's what I think of him. I, I, I wouldn't say that he like he he does not trigger me for sure. Um, I don't even really get frustrated because. Yeah. I don't get like super upset when it comes to Lex Friedman because I do think his intentions are good. Um, so I would not put him in the same camp as like Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin uh, is um, just the worst kind of like, Dave Rubin is also like famous for giving softball questions and um, not being prepared to like push back against anything that his guests say. But Dave Rubin is just, it's just pure grift. Just pure grift. Uh, he goes where the money goes. I think Lex, Lex Friedman genuinely believes that he's like <laughs> making the world better by having these kinds of conversations. And so in that respect, I can't get like, he doesn't really upset me. You know what I mean? Killer, maybe even an evil human being and so on. If you are such a listener, what you want is drama not wisdom. In this case, this show is not for you. 
There are many shows you can go to for that with hosts that are way more charismatic and entertaining than I'll ever be. If you do stick around, please know I will work. How did he even like, how did he, how did he like fucking explode? Like, what is this guy's trajectory? Wikipedia. Bro, Jogan. He is a Russian American computer scientist and podcaster. He rose to prominence after he co authored a non peer reviewed study which concluded that drivers remained focused while using Tesla's semi autonomous system, which re received a positive response from Elon Musk, but was criticized by artificial intelligence experts. That's what he blew up on was like Friedman began his podcast in 2018 it was originally titled the artificial intelligence podcast <laughs> it's, a, it's a little on the nose um but changed to the lex friedman podcast in 2020 episodes of the podcast have included businessman elon musk amazon founder jeff bezos Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. Wikipedia founder Jimmy Wales, Hi, actor Matthew McConaughey, rapper Kanye West, and film director Oliver Stone, Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, so how did it blow up? You guys are saying Rogan? Uh, ooh, thank you so much for nine months. Lex Friedman is one of the smartest people in the world. You calling him stupid is so telling. You can disagree, but he's not dumb. Um, I think I said he's naive. He might be stupid, but he's naive. If you th if you believe that you can push the world, push um, if you believe that you can like push us closer to peace in Ukraine by sitting down and having a conversation with Vladimir Putin, you are naive. You did say he has an IQ of 85. I mean, I, th I was being kind of playful there. Okay. Well, like, oftentimes you can have people like Ben Carson is a neuro neuroscientist. But I think he also believes, like, the world is, like, 6,000 years old. So there's... The world is filled with glaring contradictions. People that could be exceptionally exceptionally intelligent in some facet, in some, in some specific arena, and then demonstrate a profound naivete in another. That's just human beings are like naivete. Um, Lex Friedman's dad, Alexander A. Friedman. He's a plasma physicist and a professor at Drexel University. Why am I looking this up? Alexander A. Friedman, Wikipedia. Um, okay, that one is not the one I'm looking for. Fertilization. Yeah, there you go. Work hard to do this well and to keep improving. Thank you for your patience, and thank you for your support. I love you all. This is the Lex Friedman Podcast. To support it's so like, fuck. I mean, I realize to a lot of people, it's like, it's all very zen, you know? Yeah. To me, when he says stuff like that, I'm like, okay, bro. It's like, it's like, uh, like a Bitcoin hippie. I don't know. Please check out our sponsors in the description. And now, dear friends, here's Tucker. Carlson. What was your first impression when you met uh, Vladimir Putin for the interview? I thought he seemed nervous. And I was very surprised by that. Tucker's trying to save face here. I mean, Vladimir Putin basically clowned Tucker Carlson after this interview. And Tucker said something like, oh, I thought he was going to ask tougher questions. And he was basically kind of doing a victory lap. Um... <laughs> And so now Tucker's like, oh, yeah, he seems nervous. I really doubt that, I really doubt that Vladimir Putin was nervous in the face of uh, Tucker Carlson. And I thought he seemed like someone who'd overthought it a little bit, who had a plan. And I don't think that's the right way to go into any interview. My strong sense, having done a lot of them for a long time, is that it's better to know what you think, to say, you know, as much as you can, honestly, so you don't get confused by your own lies. 
um, and just to be yourself. And I thought that he went into it um, like an overprepared student. And I'm and I kept thinking, why is why is he nervous? Um, but you know, I guess because he thought a lot of people were going to see it. But he was also probably. But you could do a stream in this exact same chill insight voice and performance. It's uh, no, I couldn't. I'm too animated. I don't. I couldn't. I couldn't do the. He's very. Um, He's I, a wild and crazy I, guy. Um, I'm too. I'm just, I'm very expressive by default. Um, I, I could never do this kind of like tone. I'll be prepared to, uh, to give you a full lesson in history as he did. Well, well, I was totally shocked by that and very annoyed because I thought he was filibustering. I thought he would, I mean, I asked him. And yet, you know, this guy's a seasoned interviewer and yet he allowed him to filibuster for 40 minutes. He let Vladimir Putin filibuster on a 40-minute history lesson with barely any pushback. I thought this made him look, v like, very bad. As I usually do, the most obvious, dumbest question ever, which is, you know, why'd you do this? And um, he had said in a speech that I think is worth reading, I don't speak Russian, so I, I haven't heard it in the original, but um, he had said at the moment of the beginning of the war, he had given this address to Russians, in which he explained to the fullest extent we have seen so far why he was doing this. And he said in that speech, I fear that NATO, the West, the United States, the Biden administration will preemptively attack us. And oh, no, you're the worst kind of like conservative person. Wait, are you conservative? He didn't filibuster. The interview went over time anyways. Vlad just wanted the listener to be informed of important context. Oh, no. Oh, no. He could be... So now It could go one of two ways, guys. He could be a leftist Soviet sympathizer, or he can be a right-wing, like, eh, Trump said Putin wasn't that bad, therefore I like him now. It's like... I don't know. It's, it's like... It's a coin flip. It's a coin flip these days. We really don't know. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I can't evaluate whether that's a fear rooted in reality or, or one rooted in paranoia. But I thought, well, that's well, that's an answer right there. And so I alluded to answering it. He went off on this long. I'm considered on the right, but I like to consider myself nonpartisan or moderate. <laughs> um, OK. From my perspective, kind of. had to invade Poland. You thought that was a valuable history lesson that he was giving? You thought that was like on the money? Um, and I thought he was doing that to Because when I heard him say that, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck did he just say? Answering a
He said very specifically, depending on the questions you ask Putin, um, you know, you could be arrested or not. And I said, listen to what you're saying. You're saying the U.S. government has, like, control over my questions and arrest me if I ask the wrong question? Like, how are we better than Putin if that's true? Killing Navalny during the Munich Security Conference in the middle of a debate over $60 billion in Ukraine funding? Maybe the Russians are dumb. I didn't get that vibe at all. I don't think we kill people in other countries to affect election outcomes. Oh, wait. No, we do it a lot and have for 80 years. Following is a conversation with Tucker Carlson, a highly influential and often controversial political commentator. When he was at Fox, Time Magazine called him the most powerful conservative in America. After Fox, he has continued to host big interviews. What was your first impression when you met Vladimir Putin sitting in the room? I thought he seemed nervous, and I was very surprised by that. And I thought he seemed like someone who'd overthought it a little bit, who had a plan, and I don't think that's the right way to go into any interview. My strong sense, having done a lot of them for a long time, is that it's better to know what you think, to stay, you know, as much as you can, honestly, so you don't get confused by your own lies, um, and just to be yourself. And I talk into it um, as an overprepared student, and, and I was thinking, why is, why is he nervous? But, you know, I guess because he thought a lot of people were going to see it. He was also probably prepared to um, to give you a full lesson in history. Like he did. <laughs> well, I was totally shocked by that and very annoyed because I thought he would kill a bunch of people. I thought he would. I mean, I asked him, as I usually do, the m most obvious, dumbest question ever, which is, you know, why did you do this? And um, he had said in a speech that I think is worth reading. I don't speak Russian, so I, I was coming here in the original, but um, he had said at the moment of the beginning of the war, he had given this address to Russians in which he explained to the fullest extent we have seen so far why he was doing this. And he said in that speech, I fear that NATO, the West, the United States, the Biden administration will preemptively attack us. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I can't evaluate whether that's fear rooted in reality or, or one rooted in paranoia, but I thought, well that's, well, that's an answer right there. And so I alluded to that in my question, and rather than answer, he went off on this long, from my perspective, kind of tiresome, um, sort of greatest hits of Russian history. And the implication, I thought, was, well, Ukraine is ours, or Eastern Ukraine is ours already. Um, and I thought he was doing that to avoid answering the question. So, at, you know, the last thing you want when you're interviewing someone is to get rolled. Uh, and I didn't want to be rolled. So I, a couple of times, interrupted him politely, I thought, um, but he wasn't having it. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not here to prove that I'm a great interviewer. It's kind of not about me. I want to know who this guy is. I think a Western audience, a global audience, has a right to know more about the guy. And so just let him talk, uh, you know, because it's not, you know, I don't feel like my reputation's on the line People have already drawn conclusions about me, I suppose, to the extent they have. I'm not interested really in those conclusions anyway. So just let him talk. And so I calmed down and just let him talk. And in retrospect, I thought that was really, really interesting. You know, whether you agree with it or not, or whether you think it's relevant to the war in Ukraine or not, that was his answer. And so it's inherently significant. Well, you said he was nervous. Were you nervous? Were you afraid? This is Vladimir Putin. Well, I wasn't afraid at all. And I wasn't nervous at all. Did you drink tea beforehand? <laughs> no. I... Just like protecting the culture, protecting like Western civilization. So that's what motivates Tucker. And the fact that like Lex Friedman can't see that, that's why I call Lex Friedman naive. Cause he just, he just doesn't see that. He doesn't understand that Tucker Carlson is a, a partisan guy with a clear agenda and he goes about his pursuit of that agenda in a very i would call dishonest way I wasn't nervous i didn't think he's gonna like kill me or something and i'm not particularly afraid of that anyway so
Not afraid of dying. Not really. No. I mean, again, it's a t- you know, it's it's an age and stage in life thing. I mean, I've, I have four children, so there were times when they were little where I was terrified of dying because if I died, it would have huge consequences. But no, I mean, at this point, I don't want to die. I'm really enjoying my life, but I've been with the same girl for 40 years, and I have four children who I'm extremely close to. You are 56 years old, and you called your wife a girl? I don't know. That's, that's, isn't that fucking weird? Isn't that weird? You're with a woman. You're 56 years old. Why are you saying girl? Am I being nitpicky about that? It's just this weird thing that I've noticed that guys do. Like, guys, no matter how old they are, they'll be like, yeah, I met this girl. It's like, you're 40. She's 35 years old. Why are you, saying, why are you calling her a girl? I don't, like, that's what, like, like do, do I, I feel like women don't do that. I feel like women don't, like, a th- 35, 40-year-old 40 40 year woman isn't texting her friends and being like, oh, I met this boy. I just don't think they're doing that. And it, for some reason, guys... And I think it has to do with the fact that guys like really value like youth. A lot of guys like really feel like they, they like they measure a woman's value on her like youthful exuberance, that kind of thing. Kind of nitpick. I don't know. I think you can call it nitpicking. I just think it's like a weird cultural thing that guys do. It's like, yeah, I met this girl. It's like, bro, that's a full grown human being, right? There. Close to, well, now five, uh, a daughter in law. And I love them all. I'm really close to them. I told them I love them every day. I- I don't, I've had a really interesting life. What was the goal? Just linger on that. What was the goal for the interview? Like, how were you thinking about it? What would success be like in your head leading into it? To bring more information information. to the public. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I have really strong feelings about Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. what's, you know, happening Mm -hmm. not just in Ukraine or Russia, but around the world. There it is. The world is resetting to the grave disadvantage of the United States. I don't think most Americans are aware of that at all. There it is. And uh, so that's my view, and I've, I've stated it many times um, because it's sincere. But my goal was to have more information brought to the West so people could make their own decisions about whether this is a good idea. I mean, I just, I guess I reject the whole premise of- He's trying to change people's minds about Ukraine. The war in Ukraine from the American perspective, which is, you know, a tiny group of dumb people in Washington has decided to do this for reasons they won't really explain. It's not a tiny group, and it reflects the will of the voters. And you don't have a role in it at all as an American citizen, as the person who's paying for it, whose children might be drafted to fight it, you know, to shut up and obey. I just I just reject that completely. You know, I'm a, I think, I guess I'm a child. I don't think he actually believes that his children will be drafted to fight in Ukraine. I live a different era. I'm a child of participatory democracy to some extent where your opinion as a citizen is not irrelevant. And um, so I, I, I'm i just, and I guess the level of lying about it was starting to drive me crazy. And I've said, and I will say again, I- Where's the lie? I'm not an expert on the region or really any region other than say Western Maine. I just don't, you know, I'm not Russian. Is he from and, Maine? Um, but- Tucker would fit right in with anti-Biden voting leftists? Absolutely. Absolutely. The video that we watched right before this featured Brianna Joy Gray, self-avowed leftist, calling Tucker Carlson based. There's like all kinds of like takes that you'll see from leftists on Twitter where they'll be like, isn't it crazy that like Tucker Carlson and Lauren Boebert are to the left of like AOC? <laughs> like they say shit like that. Because Tucker is like, um, he's like an isolationist. They're like, isn't it crazy? He's more fucking left than AOC. It was obvious to me that we were being lied to in ways that were just, it was crazy the scale of the lies. And I'll give you one example. Yeah, and you know, this guy straight up lies constantly. I mean, he was doing Fox News specials talking about fucking voter fraud this and voting machine this. And privately he was texting people like, dude, Trump lost. Trump is this demonic force. I hate him. The best thing for the Republican Party will be if Trump just goes away. And then he would get in front of a camera and be like, Trump got fucked by Dominion. They stole this election from you. Are you going to sit there and take it? And like the idea that you're not going to take it. this war. Now, victory no, we ain't going to take it. Defined precisely. Nothing is ever defined precisely, which is always a tell that there's deception at the heart of the claim. But um, Ukraine's on the verge of winning. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm- Are there any lefty accelerationists? ginning up to vote for trump maybe like some but probably not like i would i would guess like 
The leftists that are not going to vote for Biden are either going to abstain or they're going to vote for a third party or write somebody in or something. Um, but I don't I really doubt that there's going to be a lot of like full on leftists that will vote for Trump, hoping that he will accelerate our trajectory towards socialism or whatever. I'm hardly a tactician or military expert for the fifth Some, time. Some, but not, not, I don't think like, I don't I think like large Wikipedia. numbers. Russia has a hundred million more people than Ukraine, a hundred million. It has much deeper industrial capacity, war material capacity than all of NATO combined. For example, Russia is turning out artillery shells, which are you know, significant in a ground war, at a ratio of seven to one. This is like Nixon logic. This is like LBJ logic in Vietnam. They thought because our military was so much more superior and we had so many more bombs than they did and so many more people that we could send over there. They thought through sheer force of American will and grit and violence, we could just bring these people to heal in, in, in Indochina. And uh, that did not happen. So j j simply having a superior military force we is did. not enough to just assume, okay, well, that's uh, going to like, win the war. Not the objective, but we, we got the KD ratio. That's all of Europe. Russia is producing seven times the artillery shells as all of Europe combined? What? That's an amazing fact. And it turns out to be a really significant fact. In fact, the significant fact. But if you ask your average person in this country, even if... Vietnam had a jungle, it's not the same. Ukraine has very little cover. I mean... What, what, like, what do you think happened in Iraq? Now, that was a long, protracted fight. We had far more sophisticated weapon systems. And that was a bloody struggle. That was a blo like urban warfare. What are you talking about? Major, uh, guerrilla tactics, just like jungle warfare. A fairly well-informed person of good faith who's just trying to understand what's going on. Who's going to win this war? Well, Ukraine's going to win. They're on the right side. And they think that because our media, who really just do serve the interests of the U.S. government, period. They are state media in that sense have told them that for over two years. And I, I was in Hungary last summer talking to the prime minister, Viktor Orban, who's a, you know, whatever you think of him, is a very smart guy, very smart guy. Like, sp I don't know much about Orban, you guys tell me, but we're, I, I know that Orban is a, is a fierce nationalist. Smart on a scale that we're not used to uh, in our league. Isn't he just a full on racist, Viktor Orban? Isn't it all about like whiteness and Western civilization and fucking anti-immigrant and shit like that? Here's and I said to him off camera, so is Ukraine going to win? And he looked at me like... So a, nearly a million I was congenitally just via Kong died compared to our 50,000. Are they going to win? No, of course they can't win. It's tiny compared to Russia. Russia has a wartime economy. Ukraine doesn't really have an economy. No, look at the population. Seems well, we're at it. Like I was stupid. And I said to him... You know, I don't know how to fact check that. Ukraine doesn't have an economy. Because I'm pretty sure we definitely killed a million in the Middle East. In the Middle East, maybe not Iraq. Article says Ukraine's wartime economy is performing surprisingly well. Um, I'm pretty sure we have lost more veterans to suicide from the wars in the Middle East than we actually lost in the Middle East. Simply in moral terms, and it's... Churchill versus Hitler, and of course Churchill's going to prevail in the end. And it's just so dishonest that even, it doesn't even matter what I want to happen or what I think ought to happen. That's a distortion of what is happening. And if I have any job at all, which I sort of don't actually at this point, but if I do have a job, it's to just try to be honest. And that's- Where a is- There is a more nuanced discussion about what winning might look like. You're for right. Sure. A nuanced discussion is not being- U.S. Had, deaths. It is possible for Ukraine to quote unquote win with the help of the United States. I, I guess that conversation needs to begin by defining terms and- 4,000 to 7,000. You know what, it's a little bit closer. Well, so somewhere between 7,600 and 45,000. Coming to the table with, uh, as you call the parent, the United States. Yes. Putting- a, a win in Ukraine could simply be defined by limiting, I don't know if you can stop Russia altogether Absolutely. from annexing any part of the land but um, blah, blah, blah. severely constraining their expansionist goals. Um, 
limiting losses would be one way you could define vic reasonably de define victory. Leverage on the negotiation to make sure there's a fairness. Amen. Well, I of course. Amen. Amen. And and I should just restate this. I am a. a not emotionally involved in this. I'm American in every sense, and my only interest is in America. I'm not leaving, ever. And so I'm looking at this purely from our perspective, what's good for us. But I also as a human being, as a Christian, I mean, I, I hate war, and anybody who doesn't hate war um, shouldn't have power, in my opinion. So I agree with those, that def- The deal was to give limited Ukraine to Russia, but Ukraine said we get everything or nothing. What a wild way to frame that. What an insane way to frame that. So if Mexico annexed the bottom third of California, the bottom half of Arizona, and the bottom half of New Mexico, and the United States pushed them back and reclaim that territory, you think that the United States should just be obligated to give that to Mexico? Is that what you're saying? What a wild thing to say. God, they, they're asking the world. Ukraine is asking the world. It's like, they don't want you, they don't want Russia to come in and like annex part of their sovereign territory. It's like, come on guys, be reasonable, okay? Give peace a chance. When people say give peace a chance in the, in the context of Ukraine, or they push for a peace deal in Ukraine, what they're really saying is let Russia just come in and take significant parts of Ukraine or the entire country. Definition vehemently. If Ukraine wants peace, there are historical reasons, yes, but that's the thing. Ukraine doesn't, they don't want peace. They want sovereignty. Why would they want peace? Peace would mean giving up a huge portion of their country or the entire country. Why would they want that? Your version of peace, the peace, they're not interested in, they want to continue fighting. Just like we would want to continue fighting if somebody tried to invade us. A victory is like not killing an entire generation of your population. It's not being completely destroyed to be eaten up by BlackRock or whatever comes next for them. So yeah, we were close to that a year and a half ago and the Biden administration dispatched. Am I reading, am I going nuts here? Ukraine is being greedy. They can have a peaceful country by removing their Eastern half. Bro, you are trolling. You have got to be trolling me. There's no way, there's no way you said that. Boris Johnson. <laughs> No, I wasn't listening. Briefly, Prime Minister of the UK to stop it and to say to Zelensky, who I feel sorry for, by the way, because he's caught between these forces that are bigger than he is, to say, no, you cannot come to any terms with Russia. And the result of that has not been a... Oh, we got a new Trump video, guys. Democrats are at it again. They're constantly making up stories about me because their candidate is a mental and physical basket case. There's never been anything like it. He's also the worst president in the history of our country. He went on a very poorly rated show last night, and he talked about Donald Trump and his wife. I don't know the name of my wife. He was referring to the fact that at CPAC, where I had a sold-out speech, the biggest audience they've had in years, I think maybe ever, I made the statement that Melania was very popular because when I mentioned her name, the audience went wild. I then looked at the two people, man and wife, Matt and Mercedes Schlapp, and I said, wow, they really like the first lady. So this got taken as the fact that I thought Mercedes was the first lady. It has nothing to do with that. Hold on. Did he misspeak? With <laughs> this is so This is vintage Trump, man. Um, uh, Trump mistakes Melania CPAC. What exactly did he say? Mercedes, that's pretty good. Yeah, she's good. Call up my wife, our great first lady. She was a great first lady. People love her. Yeah, people love her. Oh, look at that. Wow. Mercedes, that's pretty good. To be fair to him, I'm not sure that he misspoke here. I, th I, think, I think that got twisted. To be fair to Trump, but fuck him, so spread it far and wide. These people are really dishonest. 
They are absolutely something. They have a horrible candidate who's a horrible president. They make up things constantly. You take a look at when I use Barack Hussein Obama and I interject him into where it's supposed to be Biden, and I do it purposely for comedic reasons. <laughs> oh, all right, now he's off. Now he's just full on coping. When he calls, when he, he like erroneously refers to Biden as Obama, or when he erroneously refers to uh, Nancy Pelosi as Nikki Haley, now he's now this is like full on cope. And for sarcasm, because a lot of people say that Obama is running the country, not Biden, because he's sleeping all the time. They say, oh, I don't know the name of the president. Or when I imitate this guy getting off a stage, what they do is they. Okay, so what this tells me is that Biden needs to do like way more of these like night show interviews or whatever and just take keep taking jabs keep taking jabs it's so easy to trigger this guy so easy to trigger this guy he is so insecure his ego is his ego is so fragile and he'll do these like fucking wacky response videos every time he does this stuff so if i were on biden's team bro i would be booking him for fucking kimmel put him on the fucking view put him on lex friedman oh yeah fuck it put him on lex friedman why not they say oh he had trouble getting off the stage i have no trouble getting off the stage anybody that watches what i do at rallies would say wow that's amazing he can go two hours without a teleprompter not making even a little mistake the, the, the way he's categorizing the CPAC speech, he went on a full-on wild rant for like an hour. Like an hour. Uh, it was nonsensical. He veered in this direction, in that direction, in this direction, in that direction. If I was in the crowd, I would have been like yawning and it, it was like not the kind of let he's no he's no Churchill. We'll say that. Very few people maybe I have no, no idea what I do. So here's the story. where the other two fuses are. Information. And I don't know how I found oh like what are, God, do I have That's any stupid. in here? Isn't that a weird thing to say? Nobody can do what I do? Really? Nobody can stand in front of a podium and give speeches? Or do you really think that? Or do you just dismiss his hyperbole and you're like oh that's just trump being trump when he says stuff like this and when he gets in front of a microphone and says only i can fix this country really do you seriously think that only you there's nobody else there's nobody else in the country that can that can like contribute to the to the to this country in some way nobody nobody i'm prone to hyperbole myself so i'm not going to judge too harshly but don't you think that's kind of strange what a weird thing to say of the democrats is unbelievable they do it because they have a horrible candidate don't associate me with the mental midget that you portray because i want to tell you Jesus. he should not be leading this country and hopefully on november 5th he's not going to be we're going to have a big election we're going to have a big victory and we're going to make america great again thank you <laughs> i mean like, I'm sure he was the one that came up with that. Like, film me right now. Fuck it. Film me. Put the lights on me. Do the makeup. I'm not going to let him talk shit on fucking Seth Meyers. You think I'm going to let him talk that shit? Put a camera on me. And then he just fucking... That's... Like, and he's going to do that. Like, every, like, so I feel like Biden should just jab him, jab him, jab him, jab him, jab him, jab him. Because when he puts out videos like this, I, just, I think to me, it just comes across as like a kid, you know? Ukrainian victory it's just been more dead Ukrainians and a lot of profit for the West it's, it's a moral crime in my opinion and I tried to ask Boris Johnson about it because why wouldn't I after he denounced me as a tool of the Kremlin or something and um, he demanded a million dollars to talk to me Wow! and this just happened last week and uh, and by the way in writing too I'm not mm -hmm. making this I'm not this just the awful. Record, you demanded a million dollars from me to talk to me today <laughs> this is a bad quest line hey, um, no I'm of course, kidding, but um, and I, I why does Tucker Carlson laugh like, like that? Putin, who was widely recognized as a bad guy, and he did it for free, he didn't demand God. Dollars. he wasn't in this for profit. Like, are you telling me that Boris Johnson is sleazier than Vladimir Putin? And of course, that is the message. Nobody, like, nobody, um, wait, what? Oh my god, I got a text message to be a part of a political poll. 
it actually happened. Have you guys ever been selected for a political poll? I'm not going to do it, obviously, but. And so I, I guess these are really, it's not just about Boris Johnson being a sad. I'm not clicking on that link, bro. Come on. What if it's fucking bullshit? I'm not, there's no way. I'm not. Any, if you send me a link from a number that I've never seen before, I am not clicking on that fucking link. I barely even like, I don't even look at, I do, do you guys answer your phone if you don't know the number? I feel like that's such a huge cultural difference between like Gen X, millennial and younger and like the boomers and the silent generation. I sure I should know. The phone every time, every fucking time that phone rings, they're picking up the phone. If I pick up my phone, I see a number I don't recognize. I'm like, I am not picking this up. I don't even think I have voicemail enabled anymore. If you need to get a hold of me, fucking send me a text, okay? It's the 21st century. I don't need a goddamn voicemail. And, you know, rapacious fraud, which is <laughs> obviously, but it's about like the future of the West and the future of Ukraine, this country that purportedly we care so much about. All these people are dying and like, what is the end game? It's also deranged that I didn't imagine and don't imagine that I could like add anything very meaningful to the conversation because I'm not a genius, okay? But I felt like I could, at the very least, puncture some of the lies, and that's an inherent good. Vladimir Putin, after the interview, said that he wasn't fully satisfied because you weren't aggressive enough. You didn't ask <laughs> sharp enough questions. Uh -huh. First of all, what do you think about him saying that? I don't even understand it. Um, no, well, this is cope. This is cope. I mean, look, I think like Tucker strikes me as such a narcissist that, you know, maybe the um, criticism doesn't register. Maybe he's like insulated his own ego with like delusions. But Vladimir P Putin made him look like a fucking bitch. Vladimir Putin ran laps around Tucker Carlson. I guess it, I, I, it does seem like the- And then hilariously did a fucking victory lap. I was expecting a tougher interview. That wasn't bad. Uh, what is this? Humpback sex photograph for the first time, and both males were whale. Uh, both whales were male. Okay. All right. Your agenda. I see right through you with your propaganda. One Putin statement that Western media take at face value. Everything else Putin says is a lie, except his criticism of me, which is true. But. I mean, I have no idea what he meant by that. I can only tell you what, um... He meant you're a fucking bitch, bro. Unambiguously, he was calling you a fucking bitch, bro. My goal was, as I've suggested, was not to make it about me. I, I watched, you know, he hasn't done any, any interviews of any kind for years. But the last interview he did with an English-speaking reporter, Western media reporter... I don't know how much of this interview you'll watch, but here's the full context to the invasion. Thousands of pro-democracy. Uh, we may get to that tomorrow or something. Let's get let's get through this interview. Thank you, though. Was like many of the other interviews he'd done with Western media reporters. Mike Wallace's son did an interview with him that was of the same variety, and it was all about him. You know, I'm a good person. You're a bad person. And I just feel like that's the most tiresome, fruitless kind of interview. It's not about me. He called him Mike Wallace's son. That's Chris Wallace. He has a name, bro. I, I don't think I'm an especially Chris Wallace got the fuck out of got the fuck out of Fox. He was like, all right, it's getting weird. I'm out of here. Good person. I've definitely never claimed to be, but people can make their own judgments. And again, the only judgments that I care about are my wife and children and God. So I'm just not interested in Ukraine should have kept their nukes. Unironically true. Unironically true. I mean, hindsight's always 2020, but yeah, they should have proving I'm a good person. And I just want to hear from him and and I had a lot of, I mean, you should see, the, I, I almost never write questions down, but I did in this case because I had months, to, well, I had three years to think about it as I was trying to book the interview, which I did myself. But they were all, it was all about internal Russian politics and Navalny. And, and I had a lot of, I thought, really good questions. And then at the last second, and you make these decisions, as you know, since mm -hmm. you interview people a lot, often you make them on the fly. And I thought, no, I want to talk about the things that haven't been talked about and that I think matter in a world historic sense. And the number one among those, of course, is the war mm -hmm. and what it means for the world. And um, so I stuck to that. I mean, I could answer. I did ask about Gershkovich, who I felt sorry for. And 
I spent two minutes talking about a Wall Street journalist, uh, Wall Street Journal journalist. Two minutes. You purport to be a journalist yourself, and you only spent two minutes pressing him on a journalist that's been in prison, a Russian prison, for a year. You gave. You only had two minutes to spare for that. Give uh, break, bro. I wanted Putin very to be sleepy. Well, we want to trade him for someone. I said, well, that doesn't that make him a hostage? What do you expect him to do? Press him. Press him for longer than two minutes. You're talking about an American journalist that is rotting in a Russian prison. Maybe don't let him filibuster for 40 fucking minutes about Russian history, according to Putin, and actually press him. Like, ask him more questions, follow up, hammer him. That's what a, a responsible, seasoned journalist who gave a fuck about his own profession would do. What a betrayal. What a betrayal to like softball like, oh, by the way, the last two minutes of this interview, you have this guy, I think you should re release him. No, that's not, that, that is not sufficient in this spot. Stitch. You know, which of course it does. Uh, but other than that, I... This guy's ridiculous. He pressed a Russian dictator for minutes, for entire minutes, guys. He spent minutes two to be precise pressing vladimir putin on a journalist that's in a russian jail i really wanted to keep it to the things that i think matter most you know people can judge whether i did a good job or not but that was my that was that was my decision in the moment what was your gut did you want to ask some tough questions as follow-ups on certain topics. I don't know what it would mean to ask a tough question. Clarifying questions, I, I suppose they would. I guess. I just wanted him to talk. You know, I just wanted to hear his perspective. Again, I've probably asked more asshole questions than like any living American. You sure. know, I'm, as, as has been noted correctly, I'm a dick by my nature. And um, so I don't, I, I just feel at this stage of my life, I didn't need to prove that I could like Vladimir Putin answer the question. Sure, <laughs> for sure. You know, I think if I had been, you know, 34 instead of 54, I well. definitely would have done that because I would have thought this is really about me. And I hey, Perry with 113 months. Wow. Thank you so much, buddy. I need to prove myself. Also. No, I, I just, there's a war going on that is wrecking the U.S. economy in a way and at a scale people do not understand the U.S. dollar. What is do, 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 that process of death has been accelerated exponentially by the if you're going to say something is like wrecking the economy okay what marker are you pointing to to say that the economy is like being wrecked right now behavior of the biden administration in the u.s congress gdp unemployment uh inflation wage gains median wealth like what are we talking here like uh, it's like, a weird what? time Please expand on that sanctions in history for um I don't understand what the ramifications of that are the ramifications republicans are to be the ones that are radically unpatriotic they're not unpatriotic, just doubting the U.S. militarily, financially, economically. When I was a kid, it used to be the other way around. I'm so fucking sleepy, it's unbelievable. I gotta stick it out though. Oh my god. About his death. Well, it's awful. I mean, imagine dying in prison. You know, I've thought about it a lot. I've known a lot of people in prison, a lot, including some very good friends of mine. So I felt instantly sad about it. Um, from a geopolitical perspective, I don't know any more than that. And I. I laugh at and sort of resent, but mostly find amusing the claims by American politicians who really are the dumbest politicians in the world, actually. You know, this happened and here's what it means. And it's like, actually, as a factual matter, nobody hates America more than conservatives. Nobody. Yeah, that's literally what I was just fucking, fucking saying. We don't know what happened. We have no freaking idea what happened. 
we can say, and I did say, and I will say again, I think. Fuck yeah. You should put opposition Nailed it. I really don't. I was validated. Um, it happens by the. A lot around the world happens in this country, as you know. Omnipotent I mean, Hutch. Does it now? I'm sorry, what are you saying? We just throw political opponents in jail? That's a wild thing to say. Against all of it. But do we know how we died? The short answer, no, we don't. Now, if I had to guess, I would say killing Navalny during the Munich Security Conference in the middle of a debate over $60 billion in Ukraine funding? Maybe the Russians are dumb. I didn't get that vibe at all. You know, I just don't, I don't see it, but maybe, you know, maybe they killed him. I mean, they certainly put him in prison, which I'm against. Vladimir Putin is brazen in the opponents that he has murdered. Just brazen. He knows he's not going to experience any, like, consequences internationally for brutally suppressing dissidents or murdering people or imprisoning people. He doesn't give a fuck. It doesn't, like, that doesn't enter his calculus. Um, but I, here's what I do know is that we don't know. And so when Chuck Schumer stands up and Jesus. Joe Biden like reads some card in front of him with lines about Navalny, it's like, I'm allowed to laugh at that because it's absurd. You don't know. There's a lot of interesting ideas about oh, if he was not. killed, who killed him. Yeah. Because it could be Putin. It could be somebody in Russia who is not Putin. Yeah. It could be Ukrainians because it would benefit the war. They killed Dugan's daughter. And he could, Do okay. you fuck with the war? Okay. Some of you, some of you scoffed at the idea that Lex Friedman could be stupid, but now he's proposing the possibility that Ukraine had Navalny killed to benefit their war effort. What a wild thing to propose. In Moscow. So, yeah, that's possible. And it could be, I mean, the United States could also be involved. I don't. What are we listening to? <laughs> what is this? What are they talking about? How could he just say that, like, with a straight face? The fucking CIA had Navalny killed? Undead's like, ah. Uh... Now, 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 now. I don't think we kill people in other countries to affect election outcomes. Oh, wait. No, we do it a lot and have for 80 years, and it's shameful. I can say that as an American because it's my money in my name. Um, yeah, I'm really offended by that. And I never thought that was true. And I spent, again, I'm much older than you. And so I spent my, my, my worldview was defined by the Cold War. And very much in the house I lived in, in Georgetown, in Washington, D.C., you know, that's what we talked about. And yeah, and the left at the time. Nobody did a better job beating the, the, the drums of war, building up to the Iraq invasion, like uh, Tucker Carlson. He was a fucking, he was a trooper. He was yeah. a true soldier for the Bush administration. Got me fired up, motherfucker. I was about to be on the front lines. Wacko MIT professor who I never had any respect for, who I know you've interviewed, et cetera. Like the heart. Lex Friedman interviewed Noam Chomsky? What the fuck? He's done two interviews with him. Okay. Hard left was always saying, I'm gonna have oh, to watch Lex, those. I'm teasing you undead, chill. And is interfering in other elections, and I just dismissed that completely out of hand uh, as stupid and actually a slander against my country, but it turned out to all be true. Or, or substantially true, anyway. And that's been a real shock for me in middle age to, to understand that. But anyway, as to Navalny, look, I don't know. Um, but we should always proceed on the basis... Chompy ain't as, ain't as sharp as he used to be. I mean... I mean, look, I'm always going to be grateful to Noam Chomsky for, like, helping to shape my view of things, but boy, oh boy. It's been a heartbreaker seeing some of his takes recently, and it's like, oh, fuck. You were the chosen one. You were the fucking chosen one. This of what we do know, which is to say on the basis of truth, knowable truth. Noam Chomsky, bro. And if you have And then there's the slight, the slight issue of like, you know, just a little bit of genocide denial, you know? An entire policymaking apparatus that is making the biggest decisions on the face of the planet on the basis of things that are bullshit or lies, you're gonna get bad outcomes. Has Hodge ever watched something from Naomi Klein? The cases she demonstrates of IMF-backed coups in South America so similar to how it played out in Ukraine? Okay. Every time. Um, every time. And that's, that's why we are where we are. Does it bother you that basically the most famous opposition figure in Russia is sitting in prison? 
Well, of course it does. Of course it bothers me. I mean, it bothered me when I got there. It bothers me now. I was sad when he died. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the measures of... It's one of the basic measures of political what freedom. What Are you imprisoning people who oppose you? Is you it know, just not fucking over here? Pose a physical risk to you. I mean, there's some subjective decision making involved in these things. However, big picture, yeah. Do you have opposition leaders in jail? It's not a free, it's not a politically free society, and Russia isn't, obviously. And as I said, a friend of mine from childhood, an American, actually, who's a wonderful person, lives in Russia with his Russian, in Moscow with his Russian wife. And There's I, no question that Russia is a brutally oppressive country. They do not tolerate dissidents. They are wildly authoritarian. And so this kind of wish-washy kind of like, are they really that different from us bullshit is like, <clears throat> coming in here, like hearing it from an American, you know, that was like a, like a product of the Cold War is just insane to me. I had dinner with him. He's a very bad like it's like yeah putin's bad but really you know is he that bad let me look at what we're, look at what we're doing i mean trump did the same thing trump did the exact same thing he's like you don't think literally where is it at totally non-political person and um and speaking not of, figuratively you know, but literally where is this fucking to love the culture where? Of tolstoy you know it's not Am a I gas station with fucking dumb story. only an, a moron would say that it's a very deep culture i, mean, I don't that. fully understand it of course but i i admire it who wouldn't but I asked him, like, what's it like living here? And he goes, you know, it's great. Mo Moscow is a great snack. city, indisputably. He said, you don't...
I feel like it was already like stuff that was popularized in culture. This idea that the government could kind of just do whatever they wanted to, you know, they could like turn off the lights in your home through a computer if they wanted to. So I feel like a lot of people just assumed that this sort of t surveillance technology existed, but it was just another thing entirely to actually see confirmation of that happening. Um, so even though I feel like it probably confirmed people's already long-standing suspicions of what the United States government was capable of, but it, it, I don't know if it ne necessarily like shocked me when it came out. It's like, Hello? okay, they can read emails. Okay. Makes sense. And as I was saying, they could only access like 70% of information at any, any given okay. time, but it was incredible. It, it also Hello. doesn't shock me that like the government would like um, capabilities. Incredibly funny thing that I have to tell you. Mm-hmm. Just so, happen. do you guys disagree? We went to dinner. Yes. Oh, follow up. Um, yesterday and this morning, uh, I took Theo to school, and we were running a little bit late, so I just broke a pop tart up and was handing him pieces of a pop tart into the back seat and letting him have a pop tart for breakfast. First time he's ever had a pop tart. He likes them. Mm-hmm. And then we're, we just had eaten dinner at Chili's and we we're on our way home and he starts mumbling to himself in the back seat. We couldn't hear what he was saying. And I finally asked him to speak up and say it loud with his big boy voice, what he was saying. Yeah. And he yelled the word pop tart, but he yelled like pop in a normal speaking voice and tart extremely loud um, and it was very funny it popped tart it's very funny that went on for a few minutes and it caught me so off guard that it sent me into like a laughing fit like my stomach still hurts from how hard i was laughing i was actively tears down my face yeah crying. i was laughing so hard and so chloe finally got a video and he was also every time he would say it we would laugh and he was telling us one second and like, you know, wait one second. And he would say pop tart again. Well, <laughs> she got a video of him and I just want you to hear the tone of his voice. The one second wasn't as bad in that one as it was getting. No, the one second here in the video that I sent you was very tame. I'll give you an example after you watch it. Okay. No more pop tarts. <laughs> One second. <laughs> One second. It got to the point where he would go pop tart, and we'd say pop tart, and he'd go. Oh. <laughs> That's fucking funny. God, it was so good. Oh. It's so good. It, I was like, I already had to pee. So it went <laughs> as we were leaving, and I was like having to pinch my legs closed while I was driving because I was like about to piss myself. I was laughing so hard. Mm, I gotta go to work tomorrow, and I'm upset about it. Same. I haven't been off as long as you, but. You know. Honestly, wish I would have, uh, instead of, like, starting on a Thursday, my reasoning was, like, it's better to start on a week with two days left than full dick, jump back into a full week. Yeah. I wish I would have waited until Friday. Yeah. If they're building a case against you and they have evidence of you committing a crime, should you be able to uh, phone? Mm. Do surveillance outside of your uh, house? I, um apologize for whatever my performance was on rocket league last night i got toasted by the end of the night that's fine we did fine it was just that those last like two games that were iffy and they were still fine i uh it was one of the it literally was one of those times i don't know if you've done this i've done this a couple times where you reach into the box and it's gone everything's empty and then you like mm -hmm. pull the box with it. literally what chuck did yeah. at uh yeah, at yeah, my yeah, place yeah. 
yeah. one time and I was like, I got to go to bed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why is it? Yeah, no, you're. It's not even launching. It should be like government just hands off any kind of digital footprints. I think is just pretty naive. I'm starting to think it's like something up with your grenade. I mean, with your game. <laughs> but dude, were you looking at a grenade? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just opened the grenade menu. <laughs> Can you rename your ship in this game? Uh, I don't know. NSA and a whistleblower. He retired on October 31st, 2001 after more than 30 years with the agency. Excuse me. He was a critic of his former employers during the George W. Bush administration. Oh, I like how the it go. It, there's like no menu. It goes straight from like clicking launch the game to you are a guy. That's something that needs to be an industry standard. All right, let's see if I can get in there. Well, I'm already further than normal. Yeah, I think it just worked. I was, I literally uh, tried to join a multiplayer game yesterday, and, <laughs> hey buddy, I didn't know I'd be able to see you this soon. You look sick. Um, I don't even know how. That's funny. <laughs> Helmets. Booster career weaponry. To the pod. Oh, I can see your thing. No. Yeah. I know all the stuff. <laughs> you can't talk about my wife like that. And again, and again. <laughs> this music's about to have me enlisting.
Ich komme uns in die Mann. Mhm. Oh, I'm doing it. I was, yeah, I was doing the cod reload. <laughs> I didn't take a whole lot of damage from that, funny enough. That's fucking sick. Oh, that reloading thing is gonna beat my ass. Is there a way to go first person in this game mode? Or in this game? Because uh, I've seen clips of people aiming in first person. Oh, man. Alright, I just want to do that forever. Man, they were so close to just having a first person option, huh? Sorry, I'm a first person nerd. <laughs> the music. Oh. That was fucking cool. I, I also have a napalm strike, but I haven't had to use that one yet. And then next we'll go here. Oh shit. I just leaped. Yeah. This poor guy. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> oh my god. That almost killed me. What did you do? I dove into the flag and it like <laughs> glitched me into the base of it. I wish there was an actual flag. I feel like there will be. Yeah, that this feels. I've never, I've never done this type of mission, so I don't actually know. All right, on to the next one, I guess. Maybe I don't know if we have to like activate something. <clears throat> oh yeah, there is a little progress bar. Mm hmm. There it is. Hey. Okay, right. well now I feel like the flag should be bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was disappointing. <laughs> that was I'm literally. <clears throat> Whenever you're walking through the map, watch out for like they're like little glowing gold um like markers. And those are good things. Oh wait, hang on, I wanna try out my uh napalm strike. Damn, this game looks good. I didn't realize how good this game looked. Yeah, it's through the TikToks. My computer. Oh, hey, hop down here with me real quick. Oh, there's like a bunch of bugs, huh? Hey, come down here with me real fast. <laughs> uh, press that button. Oh, yeah. I'm on it. Sounds like 
Looks like a sniper rifle in there. Do you want a sniper rifle? I don't not want a sniper rifle. Um, might as well come over here and do this thing. Just get some more money. Good lord. Goof, goof. Got it. <laughs> Grenade launcher says. <so. laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Yeah, if you've got the grenade launcher, instead of having to th physically throw a grenade every time, you can just thunk, thunk. You'll eventually start to be able to tell what buildings have, like, special stuff at them. Mm hmm Like, I think this one should. Tactical asset nearby. Heads up, heads up, don't go in there. This might hit me. Oh, no, I didn't. What's the salute button? Um, B. Um, go right up there. One second. Alright. Whoa. Well, that just murdered my favorite. Right oh. Okay, go up there to that little pipe. Back into your left. And oh, the yeah. yellow thing. And then rotate that. Okay, go back, go back. Alright, got it. Neat. So this one wasn't one of the ones that had stuff at it, but it did have like a little mission. Which will get us more credits. I come by us in Neiman. Um, these like egg things. <laughs> those they don't really do. Whoa, they don't really do any damage, but they slow you. And remember to heal up whenever you can. Hmm. Oh, oh, watch out. Huh? Ow. Fuck. My bad. You good. What'd you say, baby? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Oh, hello. I don't have any of my stratagems to call down right now. Fire in the hole. Objective critical strategy. 
stratagem available. Objective critical stratagem no longer available. Max empty! Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <sighs> I died like three or four times like that earlier. Fuck some bugs. We are the bugs. What is this? Common sample. sample collected. Oh yes, those are valuable. That's how you upgrade your ship. Ooh. Which in turn upgrades your stratagems. Lowers. Oh, down. that's cool. So your Increases ship is the thing. That's yeah. nice. I like the progression. I was worried about the progression in this game. <laughs> Feels like we should be uh, fighting something here. I think on a higher difficulty we would be. Um, the next one is. <laughs> I like how that's so just fun. about as fast as a. Uh, yeah. Running. Um, these yellow things will slow you if you step on them. Hmm. But we can get some extra goodies by... And a lot of times in these, like, heated areas, there will also be just, like, samples on the ground that you can pick up. There's the slow. Yep. Damn. Um, what the shit is this? Throwing supply beacon! Oh, I've got a lightning gun now. Neat. I don't want it, actually. Not neat. Fuck. Ow. Oh, wait. Here you go. <laughs> For some reason, I took no damage oh, from that. You call it in. The super Earth flag. Heads up. Calling in orbital strike. 
God, I got a fucking arm. You got a cannon. Tom Brady over here. <laughs> Where's my son? Give me somebody's son. No, oh, I need a kiss. I need an open mouth kiss. Bring me a boy. <laughs> the most breathiest open mouth kiss. Oh. oh. Here you go. Not for that thing, though. Oh shit. <laughs> I was like, that sounded pretty close. And then I heard. We can probably. <laughs> we can probably just go to the extraction. I don't think. Are we on fire? <laughs> yeah. I was standing there reading that statue just. <gasps> oh, as soon as you said that, the bugs came. Just little bugs, they though. came on me. The bugs came on me. I'm a bug chaser. Did a charger attack you? No. It was just here. Oh. Okay, I was about to say. Oh, we have to be there. Damn it. Well, if you want to go ahead... It's up to you. Do you want to stay here and guard it? Or do you want me to... Or do you want to go start the evac? I'll chill. Okay. Okay, I've found something out. If you dive off of a high surface and you land on flat ground, it hurts. If you land on a sloped surface, you slide. Is it? Hold on. Wait, is it not going? Um, no, it's going. Okay, okay. Also, something cool about the physics of this game is the closer you are to the edge of the map, the more angled the entry. Uh, oh, cool. Or, uh, like, stratagems are. So, like, if you call down a napalm strike on one of those cluster bombs and you're at the edge of the map, it comes down at, like, a 60-degree angle. That's so cool. Oh, and you can see our ships up there. Yeah. Careful, that sentry gun will not give a single fuck if you are there. Oh, that's cool. Your shit's on a cooldown, not a consumable. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This machine gun is fucking meaty. Uh, I blew up my own fucking thing. Have a taste of democracy. Thirty seconds. 
Uh, and the ship also will and can kill you. The what? The ship that comes down, our evac ship, if it lands mm. on you, you die. Yeah, we played on hard difficulty earlier. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm gonna like ramp you up, like Josh did for me. Watch out behind you. Wee! Did you just punch me? <laughs> I didn't expect to ragdoll completely. Yeah, I didn't know that would happen. But, uh, I mean, I Josh, like, kind of ramped me up where he did what we're doing is, like, play an easy one and then let you unlock <sighs> the medium difficulty and then unlock the hard difficulty and, you know, up the chain. <sighs> yeah. And, uh, we got on earlier and I, he was like, all right, what do we want to do? And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I want something hard. I want to feel like I'm in a war. And he was like, okay. And so we went to the, not the highest difficulty, but the level five difficulty that we could do. And we came and did uh, like bug planet stuff. Holy <laughs> shit. Dude, it was crazy. It was so much fun, but it was crazy hard. I did the, I did get to play one game mm -hmm. of this um, single player. But I landed on Malevolon with the robots because um, I had seen on TikTok that our troops need help in Malevolon. So I was like, yeah. ah! All right, my yeah. shit got pushed in immediately. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the bugs are kind of boring, but it gives you like a better idea of how the game works. We'll go do some robot stuff now. Just because, like, it's just a lot harder because they have guns. Mm-hmm. And they shoot back. A victory for democracy. Customization. Uh, where are my unlocks? Um, if you press R... For acquisitions you'll see up in the top you've got super credits mm. and medals click on that hell divers mobilize and you unlock these that. things with medals also here's a funny thing Go, come over to where I am. Do you watch Naruto? No. Okay, you've seen, you've been on the internet. Then. Yeah. Um, go press E at one of these computers to edit your character and go to voice pack and click Helldiver Voice 2. Liberty, prosperity, democracy. Okay, that's literally the one that I have unlocked. Is that somebody? Yeah, that's Yuri Lowenthal. That's Sasuke's voice actor. A democratic dance. That's funny. <laughs> I literally, I like just picked that one. You're like, wait. I got into a match and he was like, need ammo. And I was like, fuck, Sasuke just said he needed <laughs> ammo. What is going on? And I had to, I looked it up mid, like mid combat. Yeah. I was, like, yep, I was right. <laughs> Whoa. There's some cool ass armor in this. No, I need the. But I understand why liquid ventilated cockpit. cockpit. That's the upgrade that I need. I like the DP forty. Hero of the Federation. If you go into the superstore, that was the one I was just wearing. Because it's... So because this isn't a free-to-play game, it's easy to earn the store credits. Mm -hmm. and buy stuff from the store. <laughs> I 
Oh, it must have been on the Superstore. The helmet that I saw yesterday that I was aiming for looked just like a straight up World War II Nazi helmet. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's got to be okay. time limited. So we can go... Oh god, those suck so bad. Um, while the nation mourned the victims of the 2016 Fort nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida, an Indiana man who had become <laughs> <laughs> on her way was inspired by the terror attack to plan more killings in the name of ISIS. Nine days after the Polk massacre, which left 49 people dead and 53 yep. others wounded, 31 year old Pardon. Marlon Hicks discussed planning terror attacks with an FBI source. Need all of the um. Well, I'll be right back. It's gonna go to Ingmar, which is where the. Uh... Oh, I can I can see what you're doing on the map. Ooh, that's that's cool. super cool. So the major order right now, like the world event right now, is Ingmar. The automatons have launched an attack against civilian pop populations. So all of the missions here are uh, to escort civilians to safety we can give it a try they are hard take command of the galaxy's liberation are you with me yeah yeah all right we're joining this dude Steve here I come, Steve, a level two. Oh, oh. That guy's floating. Stupid takes. Go ahead. I'm just playing. Okay, so <laughs> I, I've, had, I've had a lot of experience in politics, and I think that for the most part, I probably know a little bit more than you. And the biggest, <laughs> most important thing to like factor in here is that I'm very open-minded, so I've been able, been able to come to the truth. Uh -huh. uh, back when I was young, I'd say I we gotta like, save our I'm people. Time. I was a Democrat like you. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Bah, 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 bah. Bah, da, da, da. Oh, I can maneuver. I'm gonna land on somebody. Are you S1? Uh, no, I'm J2. Your M3, I assume? Yes. I'm me. Oh. 
Is this a hard one or? Uh, it looks like it's decently difficult. Oh, this is the map and yeah, this is literally the one that I did when I joined in solo and got fucking dutied all over. Yep. Just remember to stay, stay healthy, stem up. Oh, I almost gunned the scientist down. We get 20 reinforcements? Yeah. I only got four when I was playing single player. <laughs> this is the only game I've ever played where uh, shooting the robots is uh, satisfying. I've never liked robot shooting. Yeah. It has the same... Oh, that yeah. was crazy. It's always had the same feeling as, like, hitting a wall. There's, like, no yeah. feedback. Oh, boy. Maybe I shouldn't. Behind us now. Um, I fell down. This way, civvies. Dude, that looks fucking sick. <laughs> Oh my god. Freedom never sleep. <laughs> you guys about to fire me up. I'm gonna explore a little bit or am I supposed to be doing something? Uh, just defending. I was kind of doing the same thing. Two full ships back to back, right here. God, this game is way fucking prettier than I thought it was from TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Expandable anti-tank. Oh, I'm about to fuck something up. No, 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 it's gonna kill the people. Fuck. <laughs> Whoops. Here I come, my own scene, Neiman.
to help and did help you know I still don't understand this mission there are civilian scientists living here on this planet that has been surprise attacked by the automatons but so we are here to I get the lore but like all I did was stand there and shoot in one direction yeah that is uh that seems to be a good portion of the game but it feels really cool but i don't know where the scientist even like came from i didn't see what oh, i just um, like would see ever... a dude running past me yeah okay so if you look down here where i'm at these uh these little buildings with like a green bar over yeah right here and this button right here whenever that bar would turn green that meant that it was safe for them to uh exit oh yeah. okay and so we were having to run around and press the button to open the door and then escort them from wherever they were to gotcha right, gotcha gotcha now's gotcha. when it's gonna get, now it's gonna get wacky you know you know that's on me I was like, oh, it's not firing for a second. I should be. Oh my god. The noise these things make is actually intimidating. It's that yeah, yeah, it's very scary. There's one out there just standing in a field. I gotta shoot something with this. Oh, there's something. I swear to God. No diver left behind. Get in the ship! Get in the ship! My samples. <laughs> that turret literally went and locked in on the side of my head. Yeah, they, they don't care. <laughs> Hell yeah, mission complete. <laughs> Democracy has been spread. The name of my ship is Fist of Peace. <laughs> <laughs> my, um, I actually don't know. Mine's either Founding Father of Freedom or Patriot of Patriotism. <laughs> it was between one of those. I hope it's Patriot of Patriotism. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who Wings of Redemption is? No. Nah, it's an old school YouTuber whose life fell apart, but Wings of Redemption is literally An a possible, yeah. Incredible. I want to upgrade my ship. I want to see my stats. Oh. I, I was waiting for the cutscene to end, and then I just started moving and uh, realized that I could do that. Yeah. 
just me a question. You are trolling. You're trolling. There's no way this is real. Why can't anybody fucking be normal? I am here to talk about the Russian hoax. Jesus Christ! Like you want to, if you want to talk about different voting things, I want to stay on top of it. Why is it like this? I think you're trolling. Is my point. I don't think this is serious. Are you serious? Are you like on the? Oh. Man, are you fucking? Is this undead? Is it? Yeah, when. That is that is the complaint that I have had thus far about the multiplayer is when the party leader leaves uh it kicks everyone oh, it disbands the party yeah so. so you hunter biden laptop you pulled in my document earlier thirteen hundred dollar payment from a ukrainian oligarch who joseph from a ukrainian oligarch where did you get that by the look way at the document look at the document it says in the top left hand corner who the thirteen hundred dollar payment ten percent of the big guy was you're, from. you're 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 giving me like you're showing me evidence of a thirteen hundred dollar check this okay, is your, this does, is your, this is your, this is your smoking gun right now this is what you're doing here did they do okay. like a thousand thirteen hundred dollar checks is that what's going on can i just ask you because you seem to think that like this is hardcore oh. How come the Republicans themselves are not moving on this? How come they're not making a criminal referral? How come they're not bringing articles of impeachment? The president is compromised. Do you understand? This is a serious national security threat. This is the guy with the button for the nukes. And you're telling me that they are compromised. They can be bought. Joe Biden is subject to bribery. He will gleefully accept bribes if he thinks it's Bro, in his interest. So He'll sell out the American interest in the pursuit of this. This is a five alarm fire. This needs to be taken care of right now. So why isn't it being done? Your, your argument is that while this is true, I'm gonna get you on for not taking enough action. So it's not even about the action, it's about the truth of the situation. But the reason why, if you want me to answer your question, even though it's not relevant, um, there are two reasons. You don't think that's so a relevant question? I'm challenging the veracity no, no, of your no. claim. <laughs> I'm making the point yeah, the SES patriot of patriotism. ...evidence that Joe <laughs> Biden took a bribe? Well, I think, I think... I showed you the document. What's not conclusive about it? Uh, that is not a question for me to answer. If they believe... Machine gun... Do you think that Stalwart. Joe Biden was paying off a car loan for $1,300? It wasn't Joe. It, was. it wasn't Joe Biden paying off a car loan. Like it was his. Years old. It, was it was his Ukrainian oligarch. It was his brother paying him not. back for a loan. I don't Did know. You even read the document, bro. Listen to me. It was from a you... Ukrainian oligarch, and then they paid sixty-four billion dollars to you. Are you even going to try to answer my question? If this is conclusive evidence that the president is calm. Well, there's a lot of ship stuff. I like you know, that. I, I'll answer that question, even though it's not relevant. So there are two reasons. First, I'll give you a little bit of like an example. Why have Democrats advocated for Roe v. Wade for the past 50 years but haven't taken any steps to put it in any text? They've, They've just never... relied on the court's positions because They've... they want votes. Let me know when you're ready. Never had the votes. They've... Stop. Stop. I'm ready. Stop. 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 They have never had the votes to codify Roe. Ever. They, they've never even wanted to. Liberty's mm -hmm. enemies watch ever closer. Listen to me. They, they just want you the You asked me a question. Enough. You asked me a question. They have never had enough votes, ever, ever, to, ca to codify. Ah, we were late. Okay. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What do you mean? The reason why. Hold on, wait, 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 stop, 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 Oh man, now we're gonna run into some shit. And I just told you, they have never had the votes to codify Roe. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, do you under, this is like, ask, listen to me, this is like asking me, how come you've never benched 300 pounds? Because I've not, because I've never, I'm not, I don't train for this. I'm not capable of benching 300 pounds. I wish I could dive in the ship. Oh, fuck. You can see the, I love this. You can see the whole ship move. Uh-huh. Unironically, this, uh, this right here was my favorite thing about, uh, <laughs> Borderlands 3, when the ship would move and you could see it. Yeah, yeah. If you want the legislative branch of the country to craft a bill and then put it on a president's desk, so, um, the so our mission here is just is kill. Kill! Get that bill on the president's desk, you need 60 votes in the Senate to bust <laughs> Yes! 
and they have Kill! I like destroyer has 60 bucks to caught up by row so you can say Engaging oh, orbital we want to do this as a party and we want to do that as a party and we want to do this as a party but if the people don't deliver a 60 vote majority and, and and more than that if they don't deliver 60 let's go yes, we got peeps so what's cool is Gomez. Somebody, if they don't see us and join now once we drop down to the uh planet you can drop a stratagem called an sos oh cool open it up and it'll send out a message to anybody that's in that area that we're in need of people is there a voice chat in this game there is in game okay i was wondering what the fuck that noise was i've got mine disabled because I tried to run push to talk and it got me killed trying to remember what button was what. <laughs> Mine's always just been alt. See, but alt is a thing in this game. Not when I changed it. That's true. I, I always set my stuff to mouse four. That's my weapon swap button, but only because I play Call of Duty and constantly weapon swap in every single game. <laughs> I don't know where they're going to be coming from. Oh, you can literally see it being fired from your ship. Yes. That turret is badass. Alright, uh, I'm I've got to mute this guy. Immediately, I've got I understand the. Oh my god. Okay, why can I still hear him? Have you so I'm glad you brought up polls. Have you seen alternative? You're pivoting again. You, you, you were pivoting to the voting thing now, and now you're pivoting to polls. You're pivoting to like Roe v. Wade. There we go. Do you understand what a pivot is? You drop out of polls. Oh, the robots have like skeleton faces. This game is fucking metal. Yeah. Yeah, they're like Necrons. Look out. <laughs> hey, feller. That was horrifying. I was just laying on the ground, reloading my big ass gun, and uh, he just came waddling around the corner like, What's up, fucker? <laughs> A nice cup of liberty. something of them. Another victory, but a right side of history. <laughs> 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 oh my god, this game has Hell unlimited yeah. charm. Hell yeah, dude. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. In California! I'm talking about national, show me. I don't think they've done a national poll on this. They have, I promise you. 
Yeah, uh, that wolf man, he had his uh, voice open and immediately you could hear his TV through his mic. So his mic was going into his TV and it made that like microphone feedback, lo feedback loop where it just sounded like and then I heard his uh, smoke detector go off and I was like, all right, that's, that's enough sensory things. Does anyone even think that if Biden wasn't the nominee, it would be Kamala? That's where I draw the line. <laughs> Sir. That's not the question. That's not the question. I'm attacking your premise. Welcome to the Fist of Peace. I've seen a lot of people have like the Fist of Family Values. That's incorrect. I mean, show me your your premise. Well, it, it show me. I'm, I'm telling what do you mean you it doesn't matter? Correct. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Listen to me. I'm they telling get... you that's incorrect. Every single American thinks that Joe Biden is too old to hold office. Mm -hmm. Every single American thinks that. Mm -hmm. Even the Dems, they all think. That. Even Hunter thinks that. He's he's probably dad. You are too old to hold office. But they all want the people. Man, the the. the industrial complex champion of the people that takes a hundred of those like gold credit things looks significantly worse than the one on page five to me the one that looks like literally like it was ripped out of uh warhammer i think you're really committed to the bit and i respect yeah, that about you i agree just my game just crashed uh -huh. oh nice it's it's irrelevant what the point this is uh oh wait no i'm just <laughs> hanging Relevant, you're still in my ship. Of the Republicans no. The Senate who don't want to impeach oh. Joe. I thought it was going to put me on a planet, but it just put me back on my own ship. Mm. Well, I mean, you have debates as well. The debates are going to be coming up. Biden's going to perform horrendously in them. Oh, you're I see. saying that Trump I see. doesn't want to debate you said Is Helldivers Trump his own thing? Is it from something? That was the silliest thing. You said I, that Republican. I, I, I mean, I think it's like I, an I original. I actually didn't say that Trump doesn't want to debate Biden. I said that the original I, thing. I said the RNC have taken steps to possibly constrain uh, the debate committee from hosting various events. Uh, they are taking steps to possibly prevent a debate happening between Trump and Biden. That's do you what I really said. think that's true? Do you, do you think that's true? That Trump wouldn't destroy Biden in a debate? Allied destroyer has joined squadron. Is my mic working or do I... Are you, do you, do you, you have me, do you have me going through a filter and then like my voice goes through some computer filter um, that you have? And yeah, I guess and you figured it out, but these computers over here where you buy your new stratagems yeah. and yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. That you okay. do not... That the RNC does I really like the eagle stuff. Biden. That's like that like cluster bomb true. that I'm dropping. Yeah. And the napalm, but the orbital stuff does more like oh, direct just damage. Coming. I just bought I an orbital, you, like, an orbital sentence. strike this as well. Is from December 2023, the RNC officially bows out of hosting About the 120 debates. millimeter barrage. Uh, the RNC announced. Uh, the RNC announces it won't hold future uh, orbital rail cannon strike. Further than that. Uh, oh, that's fucking hilarious. It's just one, like, zap. Yeah. Yeah, it just deletes one thing. Whatever the biggest thing is in the area. Oh my god, the Eagle 500 kg bomb. A kilogram? Crazy. Is yeah. that kilogram? I don't know military yes. stuff. Yeah. The debates between leading candidates it's from crazy. For permanent part of the electoral process. Now the it's like a tactical nuke. Committee has voted unanimously to leave the CPD, ending more than three decades of bipartisan civic cooperation. You're being a little bad faith right now. <laughs> Okay, all right. It was good talking to you, bud. Holy it's one of those that shit. you only get one of. Um, There's no per, way. Like There's, mission. It had to have been a troll. It had to have been a troll. There's no other explanation. There's no other explanation. Nothing oh, else makes sense. Uh, be Benny, thank Run you so much for 500 bits. Jesus Christ! Why can't any of you people be normal? Why is it like this? Um, uh, Bobby Supreme with four months. 
Polly with six months, Liquid Cow with 28 months, Gruzin with four months, Anonymous with a gifted sub. How many stratagems can you have at one time? Uh, like, with four. maximum. Cheers. Four. And the. Well, you can unlock all of them, but you can only equip four per mission. Yeah. And then, um. It's beneficial to have, like. Cause like I'm in a shitty spot where I've got I usually not anymore now that I've got that uh, orbital strike, but I run two eagles normally, but they both go on cooldown because in the game it's using the same eagle ship to come and drop the drop yeah. The bombs. I was thinking if I could just have a bunch of them, I would uh. You do a fuck ton of the support stuff. Yeah, that's what Kui does. Like Tesla Tower and then the turrets and everything like that. But Kui runs around with uh, the supply backpack. Why uh, she look like that? And then a bunch of turrets. You want me to have her? And he'll just run around and like, oh, you're out of ammo. Come to me. Did you like I'm carrying a bunch of ammo on my back. Why didn't you bring the thing? No, we gotta have a thing. People use. Uh, I only talk to Alec. And the man Gang. Both of those are group chats that Alec's in that I just mainly talk to him through. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to hold her? Well, I'll take her. If you bring the thingy, I, I, I could be down in a minute. I love you. What are we doing? If I throw a reinforcement when somebody else already have, what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Look out, that guy jumps. <laughs> he melts too. Oh, I'm gonna kill some people, aren't I? No. Maybe? No. No, yep. no, never mind. <laughs> oh. Oh. Was that you? <laughs> yeah. Get wrecked, nerd. Thanks, thanks, thanks. My first Helldivers team kill. Oh my god, that guy just got murked. God damn. 
Damn, fuck you. Fuck. This one's more intense. Yeah. Oh. That dude just ruined oh my, my shit. Yeah, I just got hit by a rocket launcher. We gotta move some people too. We're just kinda. He stuck a precision strike. That guy almost got murked by his own thing. Oh no. <laughs> Is that an AT AT? Yeah. Yes. What in the hell? That grenade might have saved me. Where are those scientists? Um, there's some right here. And then there's some over next to S4 as well. All of my stratagems are on cooldown. Damn, he killed me. Our teammate did. Thank you. What do you do? He shot me in the back of the head with a laser. Oh. <laughs> That'll do it. I was thinking like, yeah, you know, the grenade got a little close. Not the highly accurate one single target thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we gotta kill this dude. There you go. I think we got it. You observed a democracy war zone. Extraction awaits. Are you J1? Uh, I guess so. You were a wall away from me being able oh, to know, predator strike you. <laughs> I saw you coming down. I felt my screen <laughs> shake. Laser's cool. I love being able to look around the map and see the other like war zones that are happening. Mm-hmm. I 
feel like the extraction part should be a little bit more tense. A lot of times it is. I don't know what, why it's... Because this, this has just been like a loading screen the last couple times. Yeah. I wonder if that would work. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, BRB. All right.
that's targeted. That's, <laughs> that's a honestly, crime. that's yeah, that's borderline hate speech. Okay. Um. Do you want to do something like crazy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you rather do something crazy with bugs or with robots? probably bugs? Okay. Yeah. Bugs is a lot easier to be crazy with. Crazy bugs, and then I might play a smidge of Borderlands before I go to bed. Okay. I'm almost, I'm not going to like, well, I guess besides like any weird, like fine collectibles or whatever, um, I'm like 10 missions away from 100%ing Borderlands 1. Yeah. You know what's weird about that game? Um, mm. I found three weapons at level like 15 that do such an absurd amount of fucking damage mm -hmm. that um i haven't even needed to loot other guns and i'm level 31 now <laughs> all right i don't think that we're gonna succeed this mission i'm gonna be honest Ooh. with you but that's what I like to hear, baby. <laughs> Why is the moon vibrating? Uh... All right. All right, so we're going to drop at the northern point. Destroy eggs. Yep. We're going to drop here and then uh depending on how it's going, try to go over and do the broadcast thing. That's going to be a very optional thing. We might just end up doing this and then be lining it straight to the other eggs. I heard that. But we are going to drop a little ways away. Just so that we're not immediately dead. I need a big old sip of chalky milk for this one. <laughs> Vaccinathan. Vaccinathan. Immunuel. Vaxton. Oh, that kid's gonna go Vaxton. to jail. Vaxton. Alright, 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 alright. It's green. It's spooky. It's bug time, baby. You know what a bug chaser is? No. It's, uh, prom, or no, I wouldn't even say prominent. It's, um, a thing in the LGBTQ community. I think that's where it is. Where mm -hmm. dudes will try to give other dudes, uh, like an STD oh, yeah, or yeah, try to like, get it or sucking cum yeah. out of a condom that has somebody that had AIDS or a butt or like some HIV or something in it. Just shit like that. And here we are. Just a couple of bug chases. Look out. Oh, 
I feel like I was adequately far away from that. Oh my god. We are <laughs> not equipped. We're gonna lose. Look out. <laughs> yep, not. Oh, we're back. God damn it. I'm gonna try and go around the back side. I don't even know if where the opening. This big, like, rock formation that we're fighting around. Fucking serious? Oh, turn around. Oh, double turn around. <laughs> now I'm dead. Uh huh. Oh my god. Oh, right in front of him. Oh god. Yeah, have fun. Stem, stem, press V, press V. Oh my god. Nah, I think I'm just fucked. We still haven't even gotten all the eggs here. Fuck. You're gay. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right, eggs are gone. Um. Oh, he can just run through that. Cool. Please get up. Oh my god. The fucking charger Abby. should not be... Yeah, he needs to be nerfed. Well, you shouldn't be able to fucking change directions on the fucking fly. Look out, napalm behind me. Dude, you can't fucking block him or dodge him. What's the point of those guys? They are, um, big bad boss babies. Ready 
Look out. Look out. Look out. I hope I didn't just kill you. We'll find out. Okay, all right. I'm safe. I don't know how you're doing back there. There's nothing around. Okay. There's a big swarm right here. All right, they they found me. Jesus. I came in like a rainbow. Charger, charger. You don't say. You know what? Oh, it's I'm gonna kill myself, and it's not even gonna work. I was right. I'm dead. One sec. Welcome to hell. Fuck, dude. Thank you. Charger's pushing us again. Did I just kill you? Oh yeah, big time. Calling in reinforcements. Honestly, dude, if you're way over here, I'm gonna go back and try and just complete the egg mission. Yeah. Okay, so that's his deal. He's like a super armor. Well, you can also um, bait him to run into... God fucking damn your shit. Fuck you. God, I oh, hate no. this thing.
you can bait them into running into things. Just gonna go straight there, keep kiting, and I'll set up some defenses. You're doing great, sweetie. Mm I just felt a visceral panic of the footsteps behind me from this thing. Watch out. This is unfortunate. I have an explosive barrel over here if I can get his attention. Whoo! Oh, no, I'm fucked. Oh, show. Yeah. There's an... Oh, God damn. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh. And you're alone. Uh-huh. We have no more reinforcements. I can't even spectate you. I'm just dead. If I can survive for a minute. Wait, no. Wait, you have to be close. Yeah. No. No. Oh, I'm not making it. You're there. You're there. You got to survive for three minutes. Oh, no. This ain't happening. <laughs> Dude, we came close, though. We came close. V, 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 V. Is it three minutes? Yeah. <laughs> no! Damn. That's okay. We still completed the mission. Yeah. <laughs> we did our part. It doesn't matter if we make it out yeah. as long as yeah, the... For, for democracy. For, yeah. <laughs> One star, motherfuckers. Worthwhile sacrifice. Hell yeah. Okay, that was significantly more fun than what the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just... I started getting that feeling game. like, oh, no. Yeah, no. that, And that wasn't even the hardest difficulty mm -hmm. that I have unlocked at level 8. And that was on the easiest planet. So, like, <laughs> it just... It just gets It gets better wacky. Better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have 17. I wonder if I can buy anything. Actually, I'm probably just going to keep saving up for 25. For the... Best armor in the game. Oh, medals? Medals, yeah. About... So you can only move down a page after you have oh. purchased a certain amount. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they, they figured out a way. What is a super grenade? Oh. I guess I'll get the shotgun. Yeah, the shotgun's fine. Um, The must-buys are on page five, where you yeah, get well, the... Is. Oh, is that the one you want? That <laughs> yeah. The impact grenade is massive. Awesome. Yeah, and then... 
where is the breaker? Oh, the breaker on page nine is a semi-auto shotgun that is banging. Dude, I like the helmet on uh, page eight. The combat technician helmet. Spend four more medals to unlock. Uh, give me a second. On page eight? Yeah. Oh, I do too. Helmet. That's sick. I like it. I'm a fan. Okay, before you get off. Or before you switch games, because I'm going to hop off as well. Um, well, it might not even let me stream my screen, so this might not even work. But Oh, and another thing about the... Um, the, the like major event like the world event as far as we can tell it is player base wide. yeah that's the coolest thing i've ever seen have you seen that's like so the cool. the gants the demon the bounties the yes. the yes. player yes. base the lore is like yeah. happening that's the coolest uh -huh. thing i've ever seen in a game yeah and it happened so fast yeah <laughs> i still i can't believe i've been playing this game for a total of like six hours and I'm broken that we woke up this morning and lost Malevolent. Curtis. Yeah, I, I saw that and I was like, <laughs> I would need to help my brothers. Yeah, my boys, no. Um, okay, let me see if it'll let me stream my screen. Chloe, Chloe's not on, so I can't imagine that there's any type of interference. He says confidently. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna show you a magic deck that I'm in the like infancy stages of building. Oh, already happening. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Won't let you. Uh uh. Okay, yeah, I'll just send you. The text message of the talk in. I don't know what Because surprise, that surprise. Is. It's another partner deck. I love partner decks. <laughs> Dog. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Like Abzan, uh, Legends Matter plus Sacrifice, but not like Aristocrat <sighs> Sacrifice, like where you sacrifice a bunch for a little value, but the sacrifice, and I'm going to sacrifice like one or two things for mass value. Mm hmm. And I'm going to have four, you know, two drop legendaries into the battlefield. Yoshimaru, it's like hardened scales, so I get extra 1-1 one -one counters. Cast four legends. Yoshimaru's a 10-10. Sack him. Move those 10 counters onto, you know, fucking anything. And then reanimate Yoshimaru and blink my board. And just like all the wacky... <laughs> um, yeah. I like it. I haven't even started building it yet, but I've just been like looking at the page with these two commanders on it and I'm like, ooh, what could I do? <laughs> and dog. And dog, yeah.
I wish the uh, secret layer wasn't fifty dollars because the secret layer for Yoshimaru is incredible. Yoshimaru. Um, so his original S card, the lore, or the the flavor text says, "Day after day, he sat there, knowing that the Wanderer would soon be back for him." And then the secret layer drop is him and the wanderer sitting uh -huh. on the throne that's adorable and he's getting pet and the flavor text says they would never again be parted oh no oh, <laughs> that's so cute all right i'm gonna hop off 10 for nighty nights not nice mm -hmm. My God, my God, my God, my God. Um, I gotta be honest, not really worth 15 bucks. Not really worth 15 bucks. Not a flex. It's not a flex. It's really more of a testament to the game not being well designed. Um, there's not really much to do in the game. Um, there's not really there's there's nothing to see it it's like mechanically once you figure out how the multiplier works then you're then you finished it finished right then you finish it's finished right it's the same thing in in most games you know once you figure out how it works it's sort of done for but there wasn't any real replayability there because at the end of the day you know what i was going to be doing i would be doing the same thing i'd be chasing the same thing right? i'd be chasing the same high <sighs> I'd be chasing the same win. I'd be chasing the same... Yeah, unlocking cards for what, exactly? At that point, it becomes a detriment. The more cards I unlock, the harder it is to just win the game instantly. Um, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? It's Online Advice Show. We give people free help online. Call the phone number 202-935-0688. You can call in and receive free help online. Uh, things like Gator on the Loose for the Tier 1 Friendship Package for 24 months. And Imaginary Scrapist for the Tier 1 Friendship Package for 32 months. Okay. And um, ba -ba 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 -bum, Buff Dude Muscle Man online for the Tier 3 Friendship Package for 16 months. And Kring Doctor for the Tier 1 Friendship Package for 32 months. Goon Vana. I love gooning. 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 Hmm. And uh, really great stuff, Blunder Punt for gifting a Tier 1 Friendship Package to Simply Stimpy. And uh, why is this font so small, dude? I can't read good. Is there any way to make this text bigger? Can I zoom in here? I'm having a hard time reading. Filter. Is there any way to turn the font... Nobody cares, and the fact that you thought someone might care is honestly baffling to me. I've actually pulled the entire world. Here's a composite of the faces of everybody who wants you to shut the fuck up. It seems as if that this is a composite of every human being on the planet. Interesting. Now I've had enough of thinkers. No more thinkers! You're a thinker? What? You think? Oh! We don't need any more. Congratulations! We're, We're actually full up on thinkers. We. We're not accepting any more thinkers. Actually, we're we're letting some go right now. We could use a few more doers. We that's don't all need right any more you. thinkers. Okay. People that we do don't need things. This guy is the greatest thinker of our generation. And this guy is the greatest breather of our generation. <gasps> Anybody with glasses. Glasses side. Glasses side. It's time for the night of broken Here's glasses. Here's my impression of a thinker. <laughs> and here's my impression of a doer. <laughs> Time to do, yeah, yeah. Throw them in jail, smash their heads with cinder blocks. It's gotta be the head or else they'll think their way out of it. Guards, what do we think about thinkers? We don't. <laughs> That's right. We've heard quite enough about you, I think.
I think I... Wait, no, 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 please, no, I didn't mean it, no, no! I hate fat bitches! <laughs> Explosive objects in the air. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Mad choke? Whoa, dude. That's Holy like, crap. That's like the horniest Machoke I've ever seen. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, we got Fantino. Oh, my God. Who is she? What's the who's the Pokemon for? Oh, no. It's been a while, I will say. Oh, they're gonna judge me or something. And so I was like, I like tomatoes on the sandwiches, and then I just kept eating them on the sandwiches. I like them. I just don't know what made me just start liking them. Yeah, I like tomatoes as like an ingredient. You know, it's like ketchup. Yeah. and i got my head stomped in and Whoa, that was cool i had what? some lines up till then that's sick so like um so okay you like you're not deep into you you're not like deep into acting but no. you would want to be like you want to be in some projects i'd want to be in some projects but only like really minor roles like nothing super serious i wouldn't want to be like a principal role or anything like that just something where i come in there i'm like what's up you know i'm i'm here doing my part and then i'm gone it's like Got five, it. ten minutes screen time, maybe at maximum, and then I'm fucking out, and they kill me off. It'd Dude. be cool if I got killed off in every movie I was in. Yeah. Obviously, The Hunger Games was, like, that whole thing is fucking iconic, but um, what was, like, the step-by-step, -step, like, can you walk me through the full process of how oh, that yeah. occurred? Yep. I was in my sophomore year of college. I was a clean-shaven, short-haired youth. I had masturbated. I was in that post-nut clarity. I saw an open casting call in Atlanta for the Hunger Games Mockingjay looking for extras. They needed a headshot, a shirtless pick, and they needed a beard. It Dude, was, that was one that of checked out. Yeah, well, I didn't have a beard. I was clean shaven. Oh, I'd, I'd never, I hated facial hair. I, want, I used to nair my face when I was young because I hated it. So I, I was like, I'll try it. Why not? I'm not doing anything else, obviously. So I went home. I had my dad take some shirtless photos of me by our front door, which was an awesome father-son bonding experience. <laughs> And then I submitted it a day or two later. I don't remember how long now, but pretty quickly they got back to me. I didn't have facial hair, but they wanted it. So I started growing it out from that point forward. Drive up to Atlanta. One thing leads to another. I'm in two scenes. And man, what a, what a memory. God, they... uncovered from my automated deciphering has me closing in on the location of this event. An event I believe to be the opening of the vault. Echo Recorder and I are not together anymore. But I wish him the best, and we remain friends, so that I can keep recording these messages. He agreed, because we need to complete what we set out to do, and document the intensive search for the mythic vault. This was not a myth. It was real. I can't believe that franchise continued without me after my death. Yeah, thing. that's. I mean, I mean, like, obviously they probably know about you now, just because, like, dude, the fucking the whole lure of it is just fucking hilarious. Like, there's got to be a director somewhere who's like, 
we should have got him in the next one. They, and they fucked up, man. I was <laughs> I was more than willing to reprise my role. I know it's a prequel, but I was District Eight yeah. hospital helper in the Mockingjay Part One, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. And I was more than willing to come back to the prequel as like a like a kid. I'd shave my face. I'd be like 11 years old or something in it and try to be. So like, if the Hunger Games would have been like, we'll literally pay you zero dollars, you would be oh, on a yeah. bus I'd, like heading there. I'd be there right now. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, what would you say is like, um, what would you say for you? This is like one of my favorite questions. But what would you say was like the best day of your life? Day 616. Sometimes I wish I had never been given this assignment and never come to Pandora. Dahl has asked me to leave. The transmission said it's time to go. Everyone has left, except the criminals who they've let loose. They won't be my friends. So I had decided to return to leave as Dahl has ordered, but then I found something. I think it is the key to the vault. It proves the vault is real and that it's here on Pandora and that it can be mine. I also learned that by my calculations, we are near the 200th anniversary of the last vault opening, within half a year approximately. If I leave now, I will never make it back in time. This is, uh, this is jokes. This is jokes. I'm so close.
like over oh. 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 drama you've ever been in whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're like this was fucking hilarious because i have mine but i'll let you go first damn hold on that's that's a good question i've covered so much shit i and, know and, and that's the thing like when you're covering so much shit you get into so much shit yeah like there's just so much to ch you go first okay i'm so, gonna i'm gonna let mine ruminate for a moment um so me personally like for because i haven't gotten into like any disputes with people but like for me like when i was watching your channel I think the funniest drama ever where I was laughing my ass off was the Sneeko shit because <laughs> obviously the that back and fire. forth and I still don't even like I kind of know what started it. It was about like the QT's show or whatever, which whatever. That's like a year ago. But like the part that made it being hilarious was the Meat Canyon video. on oh, That was, that was the cherry video. on fucking top, dude. Like, uh, but for you, what would you say stands out as like the funniest drama you, you look back on? That whole timeline with that Sneeko stuff was really an interesting period for sure. If I had to choose the one that I think about from time to time is like, I can't believe this happened. There was a guy and he made this video essay about how I'm a, what was it? Uh, some kind of like Illuminati sleeper agent. And he used these like really weird connections about my white shirt represents. but I seem to have overcome my inability to leave. This will be my last recording before I scatter the echo recordings as far as I can. My echo recorder has been clearly been and if I'm not careful, I too might go insane. I will come back and resume my research when I have rid myself of this two-timing recorder. This is Patricia Tannis, signing out. Sending the base level consciousness and how I'm like peddling this deep state like shadow government agenda it was like the most unhinged conspiratorial rant i could have ever envisioned and he did it earnestly and i couldn't believe what i was hearing and i i don't even know if it's really drama because i didn't really engage with it per se you were i was captivated by I, how I was blown away by like it. this guy's fuck. we we actually talked to him on the uh, on our podcast at one point what and he you was sat down with him yeah, well over video call or over voice oh. call but he was so unhinged that i couldn't put it on youtube because of the things he was saying like he oh really God. believed some of the most horrid stuff ever that i couldn't believe a human being could fall victim to he actually passed away as well which is even crazier to add on top of all of that and how old was he when he passed god i have no idea like was he older guy no he was, he was a younger guy he wasn't that old jesus wow yeah. Um, like that whole series like from from that my white shirt being some kind of clue into him that i was like a conspiratorial guy all the way to meeting him and hearing awful stuff really awful stuff and then that that to me is one of those like i can't believe this shit happened dramas dude the human mind is a beautiful thing you were saying it 10 minutes ago you can convince yourself of anything. yeah i mean if you really go hard enough on it like I mean, bro, I remember, like, it was, like, circulating around TikTok. Like, people were talking about, like, how the Super Bowl's rigged because you look at, like, the colors. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you think, like, do you think sports are rigged? No, I don't. So, this is, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I, I don't think sports are rigged. But I do think the officials are getting more and more corrupt. I think they're getting paid from, like, external forces, whether it's teams or, like, really prolific gamblers. I think they are getting paid to make worse calls yeah and so they're they are absolutely in someone's pocketbook but i don't think the actual sport itself is rigged i just think it's the officiating that is really corrupt right now yeah i think i that's another like thing i 100 percent agree with because i think the players are playing their fucking hearts absolutely out. if you think about it there's been thousands of nfl players someone would have came forward by yeah, that, and that's that's the thing about a lot of conspiracies like a lot of these really big ones 
there are so many people that would have to be clued in and keeping their lips sealed shut on it that it's unfathomable. Yeah. For sports, you have so many team members, like even the custodial staff would have to know, everyone would have to know ahead of time that it's scripted, and all of them are not blowing the lid on it. It's impossible. Yeah. If it was scripted, we'd know. It's ve But like, like you were saying, though, it's very easy to talk to one ref because that yeah. ref has that so much control. So much power. Yeah. If you can just get one ref on your paycheck, you can change the outcome of that game. Yeah, and like it's and like like you said, like you know, you have like your prolific gamblers or whatever. Like you always look for who benefits. Yeah. So like even if if you're looking at like people are betting on like whatever a spread or something. It was 160.
that's a mistake they shouldn't have ever made in the first place. And now those people are in a much worse position for it. So Elon Musk doing that first, so that way those people could find other jobs, I think is probably the right call. So that way they can start working towards a longer career in like an actual stable environment. But outside of that, I just think he's fucking cringe. I think Elon Musk is like an embarrassing person to read things from. When he speaks, it makes me nauseous. Like he is so like unlikable as a person. I just do not really. Yeah, him. I get what you're saying. It's not that you like hate Elon Musk. You're just saying like he's you just, can't you can't vibe with he's him. He's just cringy. Yeah, I don't know. Like his memes suck. The way he speaks is awful. <laughs> like. I don't know. He's the kind of guy that I would imagine deserves to be bullied. You know what I mean? Like, he deserves, like, a couple wedgies, like, a, a yeah. swirly or two. I mean, I think he's... I, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. He does do some, like, really awkward, cringy shit. Yeah. Um, the coolest thing, I, like, I thought he did was, like, he went on, like, the Joe Rogan podcast, and he was just smoking weed. I'm like, this is fucking cool. Yeah, and then he like, went home, and he immediately tanked Tesla's stock price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's just a fucking meme lord guy, bro. Like, in the cringiest ever, way. Have you ever taken like an IQ test or anything? No, no. I haven't. Dude, I feel like your IQ would be like pretty high. No, right? I don't think no, so. Dude. Not at all. I mean, uh, you're humble, but bro. I mean, I just don't. hearing the way you describe things is, bro. That's why people fucking love your videos. Is <laughs> my favorite part about your videos is when you give the 25 second intro of like what shit am I about to watch, and like you uh, give the quick rundown, and it's like just funny as fuck. I dude. love doing the stupid intros. I got another one. Kick. What do you think about kick? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, so I think this, I have like, I've thought about this so much. I, first off, I love that question. Second, I think kick was the best thing for Twitch ever because before kick um, and like rumbles, not really like, I don't think anyone's, I don't think anyone at Twitch is worrisome of rumble. Like who the fuck is going to load up rumble and watch a stream? Um, besides the point, I think kick was the best possible thing for Twitch because before kick twitch could kind of do whatever and there was no competition right because twitch could kind of just like you know they could enforce rules and i i remember you did a video on it i actually reacted to your video on it on stream this was like six seven months ago but um or no like four or five months ago you were talking about um how like basically twitch was implementing it was the dumbest fucking thing ever they rolled it back like the next day they were going to start taking cuts of ad revenue and sponsorships and you had a great take you were like a lot of streamers like and it's true like sponsorships is like a majority of their revenue like and they wanted to take a cut of it they wanted to like make it a certain size and if i honestly think if kick wasn't around they would have just let their nuts hang because where else are you going to go other than twitch if you want to stream like youtube is great but youtube is will always be a video platform yeah. first that's youtube's biggest problem twitch is if you want to watch live streams you go to twitch so like i think i don't personally think i would ever go to kick because i just don't have any I don't have any desire to, but I love the fact that they're a thing because the competition, it makes yeah. Twitch better. Like competition makes everything better. Competition is like, that's like the part of why, like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a big capitalist, but capitalism is breeded off of competition. You want to make the best product, you got to compete with these guys. So if before Twitch had no competition, so I love the fact that Twitch has competition. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to have. Did he have That's to say the that? Culture of kick, though. I think it is the worst. <laughs> I think it's the worst thing I've ever tuned into. So, the culture yeah. of kick and like their their biggest sell. Something ain't right about all this. point was like we're gonna let it fly like yeah. any, like and i'm like okay like it's pretty easy to remain in the tos of twitch like but like i'm sure i mean you're pretty deep into the internet like I've, i'll go on kick from time to time like if i just want to like rot my brain it's my go-to so like a lot of it is just like irl streaming where like let's punch this guy in the face and see what happens yep. it's like can we like make content guys like what even is this and there's like 
I do hate the culture of it. Like, I don't think it's healthy at all. Um, there are some kid streamers who, like, are really good streamers, like, your age. Yeah, there's some good streamers, streamers on there. I, I agree. It's not all bad. Yeah, that guy, like, he's a good streamer. He has a good community. He has a good head on his shoulders. He's similar to you. Like, a lot of his takes, he does his research. He, like, gives an honest, unbiased take. And I've always with him. So, like, when he went to kick, I was like, bro, that's a good pickup for them. Like, because he's an actual, real OG streamer. He gets it. But I think the vibe of it is, like, this is the vibe of kick right now. Move to Miami, buy a streaming backpack, and just punch someone in the face. That, and yeah, I think it's that's the meta. So, um, but yeah, what do you think of Kick? So I like the competition. Like I said, I think yeah. it's invaluable. If you have more competitors in the space, everyone benefits. Like all of the like actual. Oh my god! But man, that culture on Kick is awful. That shit is terrible. I, I and it's so weird because they could easily do something about it. Like, yeah. I mention this guy all the time, but I can't fucking stand this guy. He's a criminal. His name is Suspendus. Do you know who that is? No. So this guy, he's just an actual scourge on society. I think this guy's a fucking menace. And he's a kick streamer, and he has done all types of repulsive things. But he literally has broken the law on kick. Oh my god. He a prostitute on stream with a kid in the room, and they still... Did not ban him. Dude, I saw that clip. I didn't know it was him. Yeah, that's him. Oh they my will not God. ban him. He is still a partnered streamer on Kick and still has like a pretty high sub count on their platform. I don't get it. Fucking crimes are being committed on their platform and they do nothing about it. It's it's a joke. Yeah. I don't know how they get away with it. I feel like at that point you're just kind of complicit because they know what happens. They know what's going on and they just let it fly. That is the I think that is the main reason why Kick has never done anything and probably won't if they keep letting it happen. Yeah, dude. Um. I mean, bro, because like at the end of the day, I think Kick's angle when competing with Twitch is like they're like, we're just the gonna let ones. it, we're gonna let yeah. it fly. If you want to see like uncut raw, that's great, but we have to have a line. Somewhere. There's gotta be something. Crime, yeah. like come on, that should be. It's a no brainer. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and like I feel like you're kind of the same mindset with me, but I couldn't ever see this thing like Kick. Like yeah. even when I think you said like you were originally gonna start multi-streaming, I knew you were gonna do Twitch and YouTube. I knew you were not gonna be streaming on Kick. Like you have no point to. You're not like, you're not gonna ride around Miami. Fucking like that's not who you are, bro. Like, you know exactly. What I'm yeah, it's. But no, I mean, no, that's a. I mean, bro, I could talk about this for fucking hours. Because it, be. it's an interesting topic. It's like the first major player we've seen outside of Twitch and YouTube, and they are just letting themselves fucking flounder by being this cesspool, like this fucking septic tank of streams. And, <laughs> so, I, feel, and I feel bad for people like your rage on there. Because yeah, he gets dude. lumped into that as well, just by proxy. And I, dude, and that guy's like as solid as it gets. Like that guy's a good creator. Like you know what I'm saying? And like. He's just rubbing elbows with like IRL streaming, which is basically just crying. Like, <laughs> and Rage is just a good ass dude. Like, um, no, yeah, I, I I love that take to be honest. Cause at, at first, like I thought Kick was interesting because you know obviously they signed like Aiden, XQC, Bruce, Rage, like all in the span of a couple months. So I'm like, bro, like maybe it'll like go down that route. But yeah. then it just went down like IRL streaming route of like just the worst thing you could imagine like literally goddamn shame really yeah. um because i feel like it's pretty obvious but any crime illegal activity let's not do that i mean like even like fist fights i feel like why are we even streaming this I, I, yeah. I, exactly <laughs> like fights are cool i get it but like every stream ending in a fight like yeah. it's no longer fun or cool or interesting it's just kind of sad yeah no it's dude it's been, it's it's literally the I think Kick's best play would be to fix that shit and like create their own kind of culture. Cause right now they have a culture, but it's just like we kind it's, of said. It's like the worst one you can have. Twitch has a Twitch like has always had a culture of just like gaming, esports. Obviously there's like the just chatting. Um like Kai does a great job of just chatting. Like there's a lot of people who utilize Discord really well on Twitch, but I think Kick just kinda needs to find a culture to keep it different from twitch because another thing they brought up and like it was their main selling point was like oh we have a 95 5 sub split stream on kick it's like okay you guys don't have twitch prime subs you guys also don't have fucking ad revenue how are you gonna get ad revenue if there's literally people fucking like, who is it? uh if i'm the ceo of nike the last company i'm giving ads to is kick so they need to clean that shit up and then once they clean that up, they'll become like, because they have users, there's there's not a problem there. Clean, clean up your fucking site, and then you can get advertisers, 
then you're going to be more inclined to land bigger streamers who don't just want a 95-5 sub split. They Jesus. want they want ad revenue, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a big part of most streamers' revenue is ad revenue. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, I mean, that's that's the first thing is clean up your site, be able to have ads, um, and yeah, like develop a culture outside of just people walking around uh, Miami and starting problems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's just a bad look. Yeah. No, I mean, dude, I think we've been covered kick pretty well. <laughs> yeah, you're passionate about that. I yeah, was happy to that see was, it. That was like the most passion I've gotten, I think, because yeah. I think about it all the time. But yeah, no, I mean, they have a lot of potential, and I, I want nothing more for them to succeed. Right? I don't give a fuck. Like, because if kick succeeds, it helps everything that else. That means Twitch yeah. needs to do a better job. Like, and I don't know. It sounds like their CEO, like Eddie, it sounds like he wants to see it succeed. Um, but yeah, I don't know how involved he is with like the bands and shit like that. Prop, he's busy as so yeah yeah it's probably just too much to manage at that level what do you think about the direction twitch is going now so dude i thought bro another bro i fucking love your questions honestly you just interview me um <laughs> dude i thought twitch was heading in the worst direction ever like a couple years ago um i don't know if you remember but like the 50 50 sub split when they announced that to everybody like all creators i was like holy fuck, dude like 50% of like my subs, bro, that's fucking insane. Um, and then then I thought back on it, I was like, um, okay, that's really horrible. And then like with Kick, I think Twitch has started to go down a better direction. Then it got horrible again with like the art category. I'm sure you've covered that. Where like I'm loading up like anime porn and like there's literal like 14 year olds on this site. They cleaned that up um, and like, overnight. Yeah, basically. they cleaned that up overnight. So props there, but why was there even? Why did that even need to be cleaned up? That yeah. should have never even been an idea. We're not gonna do like art. And then they allowed twerking, which I think is great because, fun fact, my only Twitch suspension ever was when I was twerking. Really? Is, well, you've been suspended, dude. I got a three days. I got a seventy-two hour suspension for twerking, and I was fucking heated because I ended up like ranting about it when I got back, but. Bro, back at that time, there was people in, like, hot tub streams with their, like, titties out, which is great. I'm all for watching a hot tub stream. I'm pretty sure I have some watch time in there. But besides, I, sh I don't think I should get banned for twerking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, wait. I had no You know, I've never been suspended on Twitch. Dude, I'm I don't, shocked I, you have. I'm not Bro, I'm not surprised. That twerking must have been going fucking hog. Let me see it. it. Yeah, let me get the clip, actually. Give me no, a no, second. No, no, no. Like, twerk right now. Oh, That's no, what no, I mean. Yeah. No, 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 Bust no. that shit out right here on the podcast. <laughs> Dude, no, but I, I was fucking, because I was fuming, bro. I was like, because it was a crazy clip. Like, my ass was right in the camera, mm. but I was loading up hot tub streams, like, and I'm like, all right, well, how is that allowed? And this isn't. But I think another thing they've done recently is, like, they were talking about it, but, like, context matters, because Twitch's biggest thing they've gotten into, like, hot water over is, like, where is the line for TOS? And there's so much fucking gray area, but they've gotten better about context, like, we want to see not the clip. We want to see the whole minute leading up to the clip. We want to see 30 seconds after the clip. Like, for example, like a big thing I do on my Twitch is I do like fan mail. And like, I have someone who checks the fan mail, but like, it's my dad. Like, he doesn't know all of the lines of TOS. I told him, but like, so like a lot of the shit, it's like if I'm opening up a butt plug and I show it on screen for half a second and throw it away, I don't, I'm not going to sit there and put it in my ass. If I do that, I should get banned, but I should be able to have a butt plug on screen for 0.1 exactly. seconds. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think there's any harm in that. Um, no, yeah. I mean, wh what do you think about Twitch's direction? Because you did do the multi-streaming. Yeah. So I'm full on that multi-streaming style now. Like, I think that really is the future. I think as it continues, contracts are already gone. Twitch doesn't do them anymore. YouTube stopped doing them. They've only renewed a couple of them. They're not doing new contracts. Even Kick has stopped doing contracts, yep. really. So I think there's really no reason not to multi-stream and more people will start to in the future. So I really like that freedom and I like that Twitch opened themselves up to it because I, I think they're seeing that as well. I think under Dan, they have a good idea of what the actual culture is on Twitch for the first time in a long time. So I appreciate that, but I haven't seen any like really big, meaningful changes on the horizon outside of that multi-streaming thing which i think is huge but i'm still pretty cautious about the future on like what direction they want to take it because like that art one you mentioned that came out of fucking nowhere yeah like i don't think there was anyone begging to be able to do hentai on twitch and they yeah. still open themselves up to it yeah that so was crazy um 
Yeah, no, I mean, because twerking, cool. I can get behind that. Yeah, fully, get, fully clothed twerking, great. I get that. That's yeah. fine. That's not um, going to ruffle my feathers. Anime nipples. What are we doing here? Like that, because that was fucking crazy. And like, I, I'm pretty sure some of the streamers got banned. But bro, during that art fiasco that whole week, it was right around like when OG Fortnite was out or kind of a little bit after. But bro, there was streamers who were like naked and you could like, you couldn't, it was showed everything up until right under the nipple. So like right above the nipple. So you couldn't see their nipple, but like they didn't have a bra yep. on. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? There was, there was a lot happening during that era. I also, I don't think the streamers were even at fault because it was Twitch that said you yeah. can do this. So obviously they're going to take advantage yeah. of it. Why get mad at the streamers? Exactly. Like, they're that just was... playing the cards they're dealt. Right? Exactly. Like, I mean, make your fucking bread. Like, but yeah, I mean, I think Twitch is, they're doing better than they were two years ago or even a year ago with decision making. And I think 95% of that is because of Kick. Because they don't want to yeah. scare, because when they did the like ad sponsorship thing, they just signed like XQC where they wanted to, they were like, or Kick signed XQC and they were talking about how they want to start taking a cut of percentages of sponsorships. A lot of streamers like flocked to kick because so I think Twitch was like, holy shit, like we should probably lock in right now. Yeah, I think there is a I think there is an element of that for sure. Yeah. Like as this becomes more competitive, YouTube's also growing a lot. So I think that's another thing that they're pretty concerned about. Now they have kick to worry about. So I think they're really starting to focus in on okay, we need to carve Twitch out as like you want to stream here. Like you don't stream here because of contract, you're here because you want to be here, and it's a better platform than the other guys. And I think that's helping them a lot. I think, would you say Twitch is the best live streaming platform? Yeah, I'd still say so. I think YouTube has a really good chance if they actually put work yes. into it. It has no stream culture at all. That's totally absent from YouTube chat. Like there's no stream culture there. But what YouTube does have over Twitch is that its playback feature and its actual quality is so much higher. On YouTube, you can go way above 6K, Twitch you can't. And on YouTube, you can rewind streams. Also, Dude. the ads are significantly less intrusive because they're skippable. So there are some real benefits to YouTube streaming over Twitch right now, but Twitch is still king because it's got the culture. It is still significantly more convenient to use. I do still think discoverability, even though this is kind of contentious, is better on Twitch than it is on YouTube because it's such an afterthought on YouTube. But it's getting a lot closer now. Dude, yeah. I mean, because like YouTube, there's... Bro, they have like the best VOD system ever. Yeah. Because like, like I remember like I think you were streaming, you were streaming like the streamer awards, and like you were live on YouTube, and I like you were saying something, and I'm literally able to just tap twice on my exactly. phone. I can see it uncut. Like it's funny because like the actual stream itself is better on YouTube, but Twitch just has like a better culture. And yeah. like you said, the big biggest thing for new streamers, and like for me, I was literally streaming to one viewer, three viewers, five viewers for a fucking like 14 months or whatever it was is like youtube you get buried so much in twitch you get buried too but like twitch once you get to like that 10 20 30 viewer range it's way easier to catapult because you get into the niche of a game you get recommended that's how i started like getting known was i didn't even have a tiktok account i didn't even have a youtube account i went from like 40 viewers to like 200 was because i was in like the rainbow six siege niche and i got recommended like Twitch is really good at like helping streamers grow, but I think YouTube has the best like VOD system I've ever Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. And I think that's what, like if YouTube ever figures out discoverability, then it's going to be really interesting. Cause right now, most people don't even have to know how to find a fucking stream on that platform. Cause it's such an afterthought. Yeah. But if they ever figure that out, it's going to be really interesting over there at the Twitch HQ. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I'm all for competition. Like I love yeah. just, I think it's the best thing ever. I mean, I already kind of said that, but I mean, if you got any more questions, let me know. Or, I mean, we, bro, we kind of, that was a good ass podcast, I think. Hey, this was a lot of fun, man. I, Dude. I could rattle off a bunch of stupid questions all day, man, but yeah. I don't think you want that. All right, man. Uh, bro, that was like in two hours, I think, right? Bro, that was crazy. Good that shit. was fun, bro. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Bro, thank you so much for like doing it. You're literally the second guest, and like, oh, it's sick. That means a lot. I mean, I'm following Queso, so it's not going to be as good, but I'm glad to be here anyway. Yeah, you're, you're following uh, like <laughs> Michael Jordan right now. I know. But, yeah. <laughs>
What's going on guys? My dropping out or even disconnecting from the platform that you're streaming to. In the first part of this video, we're going to be going down the route of single PC streaming. This is basically just using one PC to game from and stream from. There are some limitations with backing things up like seeing USB. Streaming service set and then click on OBS multi art. You good to pop up and now you're about to set up your multi streaming options. So let's do this for Twitch. First things first, you need to name the new output as Twitch. And next, you need to copy and paste your RTMP server and your stream key game settings the way they were before and make sure that it's all saying get from OBS. Once that's all filled in, appropriate games to make sure you hit some of that sweet, sweet algo and you're ready to go. Do the same thing for Twitch and do the same thing for Facebook all in different tabs. Once you've done this, head over back onto your OBS and click where it says manage broadcast. Select existing broadcast along the very, very top and it should show the broadcast that you've just set up on YouTube. Select that, now don't click go live just yet. Just click select broadcast along the very bottom of the window that's just popped up. Right, now's the interesting bit, and now's potentially the scary bit for some of you. We're about to go live, so once you've set up your YouTube, you've set up your Twitch, you've set up your Facebook, and everything's ready to go. All you need to do now is click the go live button. It's if you've been watching this channel for a while, this video might seem a little weird. Harris, you've always different prices, maybe a couple different features, but for the most part, how it works is you set up a stream in OBS, and instead of then sending that stream to your platform, to Twitch or to YouTube, you send it to Restream, and then Restream sends it everywhere else. This is great for streamers with lower end PCs that aren't able to encode multiple instances at the same time, or maybe low internet speeds that aren't able to send it to the different a little bit. And also a little pointer with Restreaming I wanna add in here, a chat, managing multiple chats can be kind of difficult. Restream does give you a plugin to go into OBS that allows you to combine all of your chat for you, but it doesn't combine the chat for the viewer. And then kind of throw off the intimacy of a live stream when someone is having a conversation with people that you can't even see or read. It no longer feels like you're in a group with them. It feels like they're talking to a totally different group. I recommend using some kind of chat combiner tool, something like Botrix. It's a free tool that not only combines the chat for you, but then you can overlay on your own stream. I'll link to a great tutorial video down below. I've, I've shown a couple shots of her video on this video. But I think combining your chats and overlaying them somewhere into your stream is a great solution here. That way, no matter what platform your viewers are watching on, they're always in the know about the chat and they feel like they're a part of the group. But now let's get into method number three and this is where we wanna get a little bit more custom. We've already sent a single stream to a platform and had it restream for us. We've sent a single stream out to multiple platforms ourselves, but what if I wanna to stream to Twitch and Kick at the same time and only Twitch sees the Twitch alerts and only Kick sees the Kick alerts? Well, there is a secret with the free plugin that we actually released at Adam a couple months ago. If you're not aware of the free vertical plugin for OBS,
on. Nine times out of ten, when somebody who is not a moderator can click that, and it will bring you to a page where it shows you examples of commands and how to use the variables. And okay, I'm gonna show you guys a uh, for instance, you want that on, they will fade away. I keep this off so that my chat stays on my screen. This is an option if you don't want to see when somebody types a command in the chat. Click. This one shows everything under sources, add source. This is a browser source. Any overlay is going to be a browser source. Create new. I'll just put stream chat. 